Hello, hopefully everything's working. Got sound okay I'm guessing. Um, looks like I do. So we've got Willem, Kimmy, Kami, Andre, uh, Les Solis, 65, how's it going? Fred. Right. I started a bit late today. I was sitting there tinkering around trying to get my stuff set up and uh, sound nagging. Really? I haven't had that problem before. Hey Andre. Um, yeah, I'll see the light to you. Sure it sounds lagging. Is anybody else getting the sound lagging as well? Andrew? Yeah, no, I was just tinkering around thinking, oh, that's two minutes past, I better start streaming. <laughs> uh, okay now? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Maybe it's, it's still settling down. I'm not dropping any frames here, anything like that, so it all seems fine from my end, from what I can see. So, uh, I should have a more comfortable stream, but anything else I do in summertime now because I've finally decided to um, get some air conditioning in this room so I've got a heat pump installed a new one up there and um, so now I can keep this room nice and comfortable when I'm doing a live stream and I'm doing videos in the summer so uh, hey Mark how's it going? Um, so that's a good improvement and that's worked out very nicely I meant to do it last year, well I actually meant to do it a few years ago, but last year I almost did it. But I was also thinking about selling the house and moving at the time, but that's been delayed. Hey Ian. Um, so, not selling the house just yet, so I thought right, I'm going to make myself comfortable instead. did have a plan to uh, move to a larger property, which was just like... Um, couple of hectares of land sort of thing and build a new house that kind of thing and just try and use the asset use the money from the asset of this property to pay for that one and actually do it like an upgrade dollar for dollar kind of upgrade sort of thing that was the plan but uh, didn't work out couldn't the bank couldn't lend us the money to do the, the bridging part between the two so uh, oh well. some snow and minus five degrees yeah yeah I mean I used to live in the UK so you know I used to get that <laughs> I had that for a while so yeah anyway so yes yeah, so I've got heat pumps so I'm nice and comfortable now got a nice 24 degrees C nice comfortable temperature what breakfast I like I that after I'll eat that after I don't eat now I'll wait till we're doing something um Yeah, so I've got a project to work on. I've actually got a few things I could potentially end up doing. I better type my email up in case something comes through. I'm waiting for an email. Um, yeah, there's a project I've volunteered to help out with because I've done it on one of my own websites and. Um, There's like a governing body who do stuff and they also want the same features on their site. So I offered to help them out and do it on theirs. But I'm waiting for them to give them the access information so I can do it. So I was hoping to do it this weekend. That's what I was supposed to do doing this weekend was working on their website and writing a whole bunch of code. And um, that hasn't happened because I can't get into their website. I'm getting to their database, got database access. That's fine, but I can't FTP in, so I can't actually grab a copy of the website and start working on it. So, no. Oh. <laughs> Focusing is much better. Good. 
We'll see if it stays that way. I think it depends a bit on the lighting. I actually think my focus is very slightly wrong. Because when I was setting up, I didn't have my light here on, right, which gives a lot of light then, which helps to bring my face out. But um, without that on, my face looked very slightly fuzzy, and my chair looks like it is smack on focus. So I think my focus might not be quite right. I think I might have gone a little bit too far still. I think I need to bring it forward very slightly. I think it is just a fraction out. So I don't think there's much in it though. Yeah. No birds singing then? Well, maybe. If you want birds singing in the background, it could open a window. But obviously that you know, makes the air conditioning a bit less effective. Stay put, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, I knew it would be a very troubling experience trying to move house. I, I'm personally I'm not particularly keen on doing it. I'm quite comfortable where I am, although it has its issues. Um, my wife is much more keen to move. Although what she says does make logic, you know, financial sense and logical sense it is a thing, but I think we should have probably done it two years ago, really, two, three years ago. Mainly because of house prices over here have gone ridiculous. You're paying a million dollars for something which isn't that great. So it's really hard to um, to justify stuff anyway. Face set focus is fine, better than vesseling on the lens. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I'm not seeing. I've never seen. You downsized and didn't throw enough stuff out. Well, my idea is to build a. Well, the idea was to, say, get some decent bit of land, have a house smack bang in the middle of it, so there's no direct neighbours, so you get much less noise. Um, and then, so build a house in the middle of that, which has got a room big enough for my lab, part of it, right? So I've got a much bigger space, probably something twice as big as I've got now. Um, so instead of having two rooms for my lab, I could have one which has got everything in it, for example, and better organised, which means I wouldn't need as much duplication between things as well, so I'd probably actually need less stuff too. Um, although I do like redundancy and have multiple bits of gear, but I've got multiple, multiple bits of gear. And um, yeah, I don't know, but that was the plan. And uh, ten, you know, I had enough equity built up in this house because my mortgage is almost paid off this house I've worked really hard to pay, pay the mortgage off this and I've, it's almost paid off I should be gone basically paid off in about two years time two three years to be gone so I've got equity built up in this house to actually pay for the thing I was going to buy I was going to buy that land and I had enough equity built up to pay for that land and some and to basically pay three quarters of the cost of building a new house um, but the bank wouldn't lend, lend the money, even though I had the equity put up in this house, they wouldn't, they wouldn't lend it. So, oh no, it's because it's a new build and stuff, you've got these rules you have to do. It's like, but you're lending on this house, it's like, didn't care. So, well, it didn't happen. But, um, yeah, we should have really done it a few years ago, because it would have been a lot cheaper to do as well. Hey, Sheldon. Um... Um, face over exposed, yeah, it is a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get the lighting right because I've got obviously a window right here next to me, so that makes the window light coming in a bit harder. Um, yeah. Basements become jump hole hoarding area, yeah. Well, that's what my garage is like, pretty much. I've got, uh, obviously it's a, it's a quite a large garage, um, two car garaging, that sort of stuff, with rooms on the back of it, and the garage part I can't get a car in, because I've got all this other stuff stored in there, and then on the rooms on the back, one of those rooms is my second lab where I do the RF stuff, and um, that uh, is pretty full as well. 
but all a lot of the stuff that you see me doing repairs on and tinkering with in the past, a lot of that's ended up in that room. Um, stuff which I haven't sold, or actually stuff which I'm selling is in that room as well. I'll ch I chuck it out there to get it out of the way, and um, once it sells, I'll fish it back out again. But, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so I want to fix something today, or well, at least have a look at fixing something, whether we'll get it fixed or not, I don't know. Now, over here I've got manuals for the dynamic signal analyzer, 35618A, they arrived. And that's what's sitting on the floor over here. Now I actually did a video, which I'm publishing tomorrow, which is supposed to be a teaser for the repair. Um, because I don't have enough mailbag items, mail is just not coming through much and it's I'm getting drips and drabs, I'm not really getting enough, I'm getting maybe enough mail to do a mailbag every two weeks at the moment. And I haven't been buying as much stuff as I should be either, so it probably doesn't help. So um I'm sort of trying to fill in a gap for Mondays, but I thought I'd do a teaser and to sort of show what's arrived and what's wrong with it and sort of tease it, videos coming up, you know, so you're going to see the teaser after you see me trying to fix it, I suppose. Instead of building building extension, well, the problem I've got here is the location I'm at is a flood risk. So remember, some of you may remember a couple of years ago when I was, if you were following me then, I had a big flood come through here and I was out of the house for seven months. Seven months they took to fix the house. So um, that wasn't a particularly great experience. Um, so, you know, I don't really want to repeat that. So that's the part of the risk is that there's an ongoing flood threat. It could flood again. It could be tomorrow. It could be 20 years' time. Don't know. All right, so... Um, so that's one of the reasons for wanting to potentially move is to not have to deal with that anymore. It is on stilt, so it's not high enough. <laughs> Most things in houses are on stilts or piles, as they refer to. So um, yeah, a lot of houses are, including mine, but it's just not high enough. It's got to come up about two meters, to be sure. And then the garage, which has got a concrete foundation, is too low because that flooded right through as well. And they can't really lift it up because it's a concrete floor. Insurance is still covering me at the moment. But if it happens again, they might change their mind. I think there's a law here that if they've accepted your insurance once, they can't cancel it or something like that. Unless something changes, maybe. But I think I could be wrong about that. I think that once they've insure, agreed to insure you, they can't cancel it because of your risk. I think, yeah, something's different. We didn't like the word dikes, really? Hmm. Okay. Um, so I think, I'm, you know, as long as I don't change the policy, I should be okay. <laughs> uh... Build a, build a yeah, pie boat and build his extension. Yeah, well, anyway, I mean, the flood risk isn't massive, but it has a tendency to flood here because it's quite low. So, I've had lots of flooding in the past, but it's not been into the house, it's just completely flooded the section, you know, and all the land has been completely flooded. I've lost a car in it once um, a few years ago. No, I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I lost a car because of flooding, because it was in the garage, my other garage, um, my old garage before that new one was built, and um, yes, yeah, so I lost the car in that flood, and so for a couple of years ago it went right through everything, so yeah, it's one of these things. Insurance companies always try to find a reason out, yeah, well, they do, that's... They're trying to save themselves some money, even though 
you're paying them to do that anyway. We'll see. So I'm not too worried about it, but it is a risk. And um, yeah, you can only mitigate things so much. We're doing what we can to try and reduce risk, having valuable things up high in case something does happen, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so we should probably start tinkering at the bench, I suppose. Like I said, I do get an email come through from this guy, which I emailed yesterday trying to get access to this website. I might have to cut the stream off to go and do that work because it is urgent. So um, we'll see. I mean, right, by, right now, I'm basically waiting for this guy to get back to me and get me into the site. Um, because right now, um, FTP in, I just can't FTP. It just won't let me in. It's not that it's sort of refusing the credentials and giving it, it's just not connecting, which is weird. Can't get a connection to the FTP server, let alone talk to it and actually negotiate a log on it. Anyway, I, tried, I spent a few hours trying different things and different combinations, different settings, and that nah, can't get it. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I've got this thing here. It's, it's plenty, but I haven't dropped any frames yet, which is good. <coughs> so, shall we look at this thing? I, I'm not going to power it up again. I sh should power it up to show you, but I'm not going to because that will obviously charge up all the capacitors inside and make it a bit more hazardous to work on. So, it's had a couple of days sitting there. Well, it's probably been three days sitting there so it would have helped to discharge everything make it a little bit safer um, it does have a CRT screen on it so that is an added risk when you're doing CRTs you've got much higher voltages which can stay present for a period of time because uh, my understanding is that the CRT itself can act like a capacitor and hold the charge yeah apparently I don't know So when you're doing CLT stuff, you be a bit more careful. Right. Let's chat on the bench, see if we can pull it apart and have a look, see what's inside it. I have to also remember to record some video. Must have forget to record video at the same time. Always got this trying to Two things at once is hard enough, like live streaming and repairing something. When I'm trying to do recording, live streaming, and repairing something, that's three things. That's really pushing it. I'm usually like a one thing at a time person. LOPT, yes. And let's change camera views. So this is what arrived. Now the guy did package it really well, you know. I, as I always, do when I buy something on eBay, as I always say, stick plenty of packaging at it. Now when we did the last live stream, I think it was actually last stream, wasn't it? Is when I actually bought this thing. Yeah, I think that's. I think it was the last stream when I did, wasn't it? Anyway, this is what I purchased. So he packaged it really well, as you'll see tomorrow's video. It had the. I'm actually quite pleased it came with the cover to protect the front panel. The cover is actually broken. It's all split here, and that's a new split. It's all clean, so that's all brand new. It's only just happened. Um, and just here as well, so split in there as well. I'm probably glue a bit together, maybe do something with it. But um, it did its job. That's my point of view. Is that this cover did actually protect the meter, well, protect the front panel, so the front panel doesn't have any damage on it. So excellent but it did stick lots of padding all around it but obviously it got thrown around the box was a bit mounted up all the corners were stoved in and that sort of stuff it had been thrown around but it kind of survived 
because the guy had enough padding in it. But it's got a pouch on the top, nothing in it. Um, it does power up. The forks on the screen. Uh, it's a power up self test, and it gives two errors, which were zero seven two six and zero seven two no three one zero seven three one. I think that's what they were. Um, let's come over here again. Yes, if you're on Patreon, if you're a Patreon supporter, then you you can see the video which I'm publishing tomorrow. It's already on Patreon for the supporters. So people like William there, um, William, um, he has already seen it, and Fred potentially has already seen it. I believe yes, Fred. Um, who else is in here? I can't remember. So yes, um, Patreon supporters have had the potential to have already seen that video. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is try and find the video, and I shall try and find that section where it shows the faults. Um, and I'll show you that bit. Give me a second, it's got to find it. Oh, I'll show us our top screen. So this is what's showing. Yeah, I do remember it right. Zero seven two six and zero seven three one. Those are the codes it's giving as errors, and it also has this RAM RAM F down the bottom here. I don't know what the significance of that is yet. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Um, I don't know. Now this does have option double zero one on it. Apparently, hey, my chat's too big. It's cutting the top of my head off. think oh nice no, my camera's talking to it okay um, so that means it's got memory um, potentially bubble memory so it's got like an add-on thing for that but I don't know much about that part of it I haven't really looked into that really I don't know that much about the instrument to be honest I know it's a dynamic signal analyzer, you can do low frequency stuff with it, but like a spectrum analyzer, same kind of thing. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I've got a real use for it to be honest. I just thought it'd be a cool thing to get and actually have something which does that kind of work. You never know what you're going to use in the future. So, anyway, that's the year it's giving. So, that's what I need to try and sort out. Hopefully, you can actually see us on screen. They are pretty small. Um, but yeah, the screen's working. I don't know about buttons, stuff the buttons are working yet, I've got no idea. I won't know to actually get the thing booted up. So we'll go and look at this and find out exactly what's going on there. Um, yeah. Graphics cover soldering iron, yeah, I mean, it probably could. You, know, you have to get the heat through it to, to be right through the join, but I've, I've been inclined to glue it back together, but it's super glue. It may be just. You can't really use a soldering iron after Pacific long because it gives off the fumes, it's pretty awful. Um, I don't know if the calibration memory is bad or what, I don't know, but apparently the, I was watching a video by MJ Morton, who's purchased one of these, maybe six months ago I think it would have been, and um, He's, he mentioned in one of his videos that it took what they say to take allow five hours for the calibration process five hours to calibrate it hey Chris are you there 
so yes at least I do have the CRT and you know that part is working and you know it it's not completely dead which is a good sign but I was looking at the EV bog forum as well yesterday when I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep kind of um, and there's a thread on there about it and it seems that diodes blowing and things like that are quite common in the power supplies and these things so we'll see what the power supplies are like I have to go around check every semiconductor I think to make sure all that everything looks right but what helps me is that I do actually have the four service manuals for those things so I've got the circuit diagrams and everything are all in here and I've also got electronic copies which I also posted with the video on Patreon so again if you're on Patreon the circuit diagrams all the service manuals are on the Patreon post for the video for tomorrow um, so if anyone wants to follow along, you can. In fact, it's usually quite helpful when people follow along because they give me pointers when um, I'm missing something because they've found something in the manual which I haven't seen. And I haven't actually read the manuals. I've, all I've done so far is glanced at the, trying to find out what that error is referencing. So that was in volume two. So it's in this one. Um, there's a diagnostic thing somewhere. I think it was this book. Let me look. Adjustments for isolation. Um, now I think it's referencing test B, which is power supply stuff. Um, test zero power on test was failing, which is section 655. And test B, which I think is what it's referencing, is section 614. So section 6. Is in here somewhere. Where's section 6? This is 7. That's seven. Maybe it's in the back of the other manual. Might be in the back of the other manual then. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm probably missing something. Might be the other manual. I'm, six, I'm sure it is section seven. Yes, that's what section seven. It's the other manual one. But, I know what it is, so. One. So section six, yes, five, six. That makes more sense. All right. So six fifty five. Test zero power on self test. It's. Can I show you this? I've got the electronic manual. I can show you the manual on the screen as well. Can I? Could do it that way rather than me looking at a physical manual. If do this, it might be easier, better for you guys. Let me pull this up. I should think about this in the head of time, shouldn't I? At least I know which manual I'm supposed to be in. I think sometimes it's a bit quicker to look at a physical manual. And I'll chuck this in the top screen and show you, and hopefully get it big enough. Is this? Don't you know what page it is? Let's take a guess. Give me a second, I'll show you in a minute once I find it. That's the way off. Right, let's change screens. It's section 611. Six seventy three, not too far. Fifty three and close. Right. 
So it's a power and self test which is failing, which is just here. Continuous mode, thanks. Right. Let's put this manual back to one side again. So, this is what we've got to do. Well, this is what it does when it powers up. So it checks these things, power supplies, front panel, and then display assemblies. So that's 08. You want 07? Where's the 07 mentioned? Just did I miss it? This is different to mine. Which doesn't look the same. That's definitely different. Hold on a minute. Give me a second. No, it's the same. Where am I seeing that other thing then? I don't know. Anyway, I've got to try and find this now. It's mentioning 08. Here we go. It wasn't going far enough. 0726 could also be RAM era. That could be interesting. Um, right, so it did say RAM F, didn't it, in display? So it makes you wonder if that. One there is bad. Hey, Kiro. Andy. Okay, so that's potentially a bad RAM chip, which is going to be hard to deal with. Right, and that does specifically mention that 0726 code. Right. What's the other one? Zero seven three one RAM refresh test error. Okay. So when I first looked at this, though, when I looked at the manual the very first time around, I did the video, which is for tomorrow. It looked like power supply. So it's not surprising it's zero seven three one after two six. If the um, If the RAM is bad, because obviously the RAM doesn't work. Maybe it's a RAM problem. Oh, it could be a problem. Anyway, it could still be power supply. It could just be the power supply is a bit weak and it's triggering the RAM to play up. So I'd be looking at power supplies first anyway. Um, but I do remember looking differently at this before. Maybe I'm looking at something else. Let me try and find it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I mentioned power supplies before. Uh, I've got to try and find a thing, it's a problem. There's a lot of information here, which is great. Was it... Uh, 0614, wasn't it? Was there a page I'd look for? It's 21. 17. Test B. Now, what was the list of saying the self test routine stuff? Wish I could find it again. Um, but test B was something I was mentioned. Um, 
Maybe it's nothing to do with this, I don't know. Hmm. Computer guys are nice memory test gizmos. Alright. I mean, I've got a few bits of gear which can test ICs. Well, I can test RAM, I don't know. Um, I'm not even sure what the RAM is, I'll say. There's different versions. Don't know, I don't know. Don't know if the RAM's in socket, so I have to have, that, have a look. Um, where's this bloody page I was trying to find? Let's go back to the index. Let's go back to the index so this thing and find out what I'm looking for. So there's aimlessly browsing through it. Um, for isolation. Yeah, I think 611, I think that's what I need, 611. Yeah, that's where it mentions the tests. Where's the bit I've had before? That's what I'm bugging now, because I saw something which referenced the test and actually showed like a flow chart of the test process. Oh, I thought I'd be going to find it ever again now. Yeah? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I hate the way it's wrapping around like this. Well, let's pull it apart. Let's have a look. I mean, it could just be some like a blown tantalum. I mean, these are known for having tantalums failing and all sorts of stuff. So it could be power supply is a bit weak and that RAM needs a really good supply or something. Um, I can't get to the self-test process. So some of RAM I see is a three row minus five volts, plus five volts, plus 12 volts. Yeah. You missed the beginning. Yeah. Oh. I'm still just trying to figure out what I'm going to do, Andy, so don't worry too much. Um, there is no self-test. The I haven't powered up in this stream, but what I've done is made a video which is released tomorrow which shows the faults, which is, it gives an error code on boot up of a self-test routine when it boots. Um, and then it doesn't go any further. It says 0726 and 0731 which is what I shined just then, um, which appeared to link to RAM failures, but I saw somewhere else when I was looking at it the first time around, it's pointing to power supplies. So, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'd like to find out where that is. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. Where is it? So it mentions 0726 here as RAM failure. So, possible, maybe it's a ramp failure. Remember, that's why I got rid of it because I knew it was too hard to fix. Um, yeah, I haven't really done much with RAM. In fact, I've done nothing with RAM, so it could be an interesting one for me as well. Yeah, anyway, okay. Let's go and pull it apart and have a look. Let's see what we're dealing with. Mustn't forget to call video. If you see me doing stuff and forgetting to call video, make sure you yell out, will you? Uh, okay, let me. I should get the camera working. So I do want to capture this as a normal video as well, not just the live stream, because this is. I expect this to be a multi-part video. I expect this is going to be a big one. <coughs> I'm trying to get my camera set up. And I'm 
try and get it focused, that's always quite nice. Right. So I'm going to try and fix this thing today. Well, we'll try and figure out what's going on with it at least and have a poke around. We're only going to get it finished today, but there might be multiple videos I have to do. We'll see what happens. But we're going to pull this thing apart. It's still sealed in the back here. Still got a sticker over that. So um, it actually says property of national semiconductor. So that's interesting. Um, we'll put it apart and see what's going on. Basically, I'm getting some error codes on the screen. If you didn't see the previous video I did not long ago, a little teaser video, it showed the full codes it's giving. It's giving a boot up test failure of 0726 and 0731. Um, so it could be RAM, apparently. It could be power supplies, potentially. I don't know. I've got When I first looked at this, I thought it was a power supply problem. But then I'm looking at these other things. It's looking at maybe it's a RAM problem. So I don't know. I'm... I don't know what I saw the first thing, I can't find it. Anyway, we'll put it apart and we'll see what we're dealing with. I mean, I always spit power supplies first. I mean, I, my general philosophy is if you've got a problem with an instrument, recap it. First thing, replace all the capacitors. Make sure the power supplies are good. Because 99% of the time, that will solve the problem. And the other 1% of the time, it would have been greatly aggravating the problem. Uh, and it may have caused a, fur a further failure from bad power supplies. So the power supplies are always something you attack first. Always. Um, at the very least you inspect them and make sure it looks kind of alright because you never know someone else might have already been there and replaced all the caps and done that job for you. It's happened to me before. I've got an instrument and it's been done already. Um, so you know you never quite know but always my first suspicion is always power supplies. You roll those out make sure they're good and not just the main power supplies, but you also got sub supplies and other circuit boards. A lot of times boards would have their own little sub rails on them, might be a little five volt rail or something like that, which are split off from the main supply. You know, always suspect those as well. Make sure that you've got any capacitors and those circuits that those are done as well. Obviously checking for tantalum caps which are blown up, you know, any black stains on the circuit boards, that kind of thing. Previous work. So we'll put it open, but the fact it's still sealed means it's probably failed. And no one's touched it, which is a good thing. If someone else has already been playing with it after it's failed, you don't quite know for sure what you're dealing with. But if it's failed and it's not been touched, you're a bit more confidence. Uh, screwed over. I oh, that waffling's chit chat. Yeah, so it's RAM issues, yeah. I've seen, there's a guy, I can't remember his name now. Um, there's a channel, a channel I watch from time to time. He does lots of arcade machine stuff. Can't think of the channel name now. That's quite interesting to watch. Page 6-3, you reckon? 6-3, okay. Thank you, William. Let's have a look. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Will. That's right. Well, it says 6.2. The one I was actually looking at was 6.2. But uh, 6.3. What's in 6.3? The static situation stuff. Okay, yeah. So you're almost right. Very close. Okay. Let me show you this. This is what I saw before. Because it did mention test B. I remember seeing test B and I thought, right, and it's pointing over here to power supplies. So, let me just go and find out what test B is. I, I did reference test B and it was only a few pages away from this one. So it should be close to here. Let's see if we can find it. I think it was mentioned in one of his tables. The power on test, there we go. This thing here. 
full isolation test B. There we go, that's where I got that from. So it seems cards basically, I don't know, most of them are, <laughs> seems to be. Um, so yes, yeah, 6 7, so that's page 197. I should make a note of these page numbers so I'm going to jump backwards and forwards to them. Alright, let me do that. So you've got page uh, 197 is the symptoms, symptoms. And what was that other page? That was um, a chart there, that's page 192. Okay. Um, which is the test sequence. But you can see why I thought it was power supply because this so, you know, the other page mentioned test B, and this is test B, this so is power supplies. So, that's why I was thinking that before. Okay. Back to this view. Ali, how's it going? Um, the new RF generator. Um, depends what you, your, your tasks are, Lee. I mean, if you're not doing anything too complicated, you could probably get something used, like an HP um, A647, is it? A648, something like that, maybe. Or a Marconi 2022, maybe a D, get a, a, a slightly newer version. Um, I think so, like, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing anything more complex, then you know, so other than something like AM FM generation, then you may need something a bit more complicated than that, maybe something a bit more modern, but some of the older gear works fine. That's what I'm using. Okay, so whilst I'm recording this video, I'm also doing a live stream, and Willem, who's a member, supporter of the channel, he pointed out the pages that I was looking at previously, so I showed he's seen that video. And um, it does indeed reference power supply in that section. So it's got con conflicting information in a way. Like it says test zero could be a power supply. It also says test zero um, seven two six and stuff is RAM failure. So it could be either, really. I'm hoping it's power supply. RAM would be a bit of a pain to deal with. This is a bit sticky. Come on, move. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Ooh, it's jammed. This has all been twisted a little bit as well, it's not helping. Here we go. Because it's bent a little bit. I have to try and sort that out. It's it's been bent one way, so I need to try and straighten it. Right. Uh, did I do that one? I think I did that one. Yes. Great. Let's try and lift it off somehow. <laughs> Very tight. Well, the internal shields are still there, that's always a good sign. Alright, so you've got CRT over here. Now this is dangerous. Now this has been powered off for a few days, but that doesn't mean it's safe. There could still be high voltages. Now CRTs can act like a capacitor themselves and actually hold a charge. Um, and there's also some massive caps right here. Alright, so there's likely to still be high voltage in this area, so this is something I've got to try and avoid touching anything around. I'm going to work in, in this area initially, which is power supply. So what I'm going to do is, I think I might actually just, um, I might just pull cards out, inspect all the cards, see if I see anything dodgy on any of the cards. I'll start over here, I'm going to start the, on, the, on the actual 
brain of it first, um, just for inspection, and then we'll pull the cards out, a quick look at them all, and then we'll work our way back. And then the intention then is that by the time we get to the power supply, I should have found nothing over here, fingers crossed, and then I can work on the power supply section. Because there's no point doing the power supply, then forgetting to check further, and then um, finally you've got a fault one here, and the power supply blows it out further. It could be that you get a fault over here, which then blows, which damages the power supply. Um, or vice versa, obviously, but I want to check over here first, and then hopefully not forget to check it later. So, we'll do that. Because so there's a few cars in here, we'll just pull them out and inspect them. So it's all cross-head screwdrivers. Little posi drives, look at it. These have washers on, so don't drop the washers if you're doing this yourself. Don't know, be trying to get those back out of the chassis floating around from somewhere. This isn't actually the right screwdriver for this, but it fits kind of. It's a Phillips screwdriver, these are posi drive screws. You can tell the posi drive screw because it's got the lines on it. I can see it on camera here or not, let's try and show you. So you've got those extra lines that go away from the center, so you've got them all across, and you've got the X that goes across them, that means posi drive. In case you didn't know that, let's see what I did to find the difference. Now is that it? It looks like it. Okay. Well, I've done very little research on this thing. I'm just basically poking around, going to see what I can find. Spin around. Okay. Should I check? Okay, nothing new to check. Excellent. Carry on. Do you guys see alright? I can probably zoom in a little bit of that actually. And I'm watching that's not already done this, click like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. I need to say that more often in the beginning of the video, not towards the end. Yeah, look at this, this is definitely really bent. I just need to do something with those. I'll have to take them off. How do you take them off? Mm. I'll take them off somehow and actually um, put it in a vice or something and try and get this straight because unless you bend in here, I think that's what's pushing it over. So this one here is bent. I'm not doing that in my hands. Right. So, the video I watched from NJ Morton, he had an issue on this card here, the yellow TAD card, with a tunable capacitor just here, he couldn't get that capacitor tuned correctly. He had a lot of corrosion and stuff like that, apparently. A bit of oxidisation, I mean I can see a little bit on this, not looking too bad. Um, doesn't look as bad as the one he had actually, so hopefully it's not a problem of mine. Um, it's to do with the noise floor adjustment. So. Anyway, we'll worry about it if I get to it. So let's pull these cards out. Um, this has got an extra data on here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> trying to figure out where to start. Interconnects and that sort of stuff. Now this does have diagnostic LEDs inside it as well. So when you power it up, you do get LEDs that light up and tell you things it has detected. Um, once I've gone through the boards and done some any rectifications I find then I will look at for those LEDs see what those are saying as well right now I haven't done that I've only powered up with the case on this first I've taken the case off so anyway let's see if we can figure out how to get this board out it looks quite interesting I think it's just one connector yes yeah, just that one connector there let's pop that off A uh, SMB connector. It's very tight, I'm not quite sure. I think of much room to actually get that connector off there. Okay. 
We have a tricky one. There we go. Okay, touch the desk. Put it, put it down, then put it down. <laughs> Alright. Um, this is covered in axial tents. I'm looking for the bead type axial tents to see if I've got any of those which are blown. Let's just get a closer look at this, shall we? What I'll do is I'll change views in a second and go to this other camera so you can see a bit better. If I do HDMI, that should pull it up. Maybe not. Because <laughs> oh, I haven't got it plugged in, that's why. Okay. Hold on, let's plug that in. It usually works a lot better when you plug it in. There it is. <laughs> it's got all dark, Chris. It's got all dark. Uh, okay, so I should give you a better view of the screen at least, like that. Just again, doesn't be moving around. Anti static super important. Make sure you touch anti static surfaces before you pick things up and make sure you're not using this to bridge across between you and the surface unless you've already touched it. So, we've got a whole bunch of these spiral caps on there. Now, generally, they're good. I don't really come across many problems with them, they're usually pretty good. So, I'm just looking for any tantalums. They could be axial. I'm just looking for anything burnt as well. I'm not seeing anything on here, so it's, that's a good thing. So like just here, that looks like an axial tantalum, just there. But these are probably tantalums too, you know, they quite commonly are. There's nothing there which looks burnt. Check this side. There's some tarnishing on these connectors, so these are slightly tarnished. So I will actually give this a polish up before I put the ball back in again. Maybe put some deoxit on it. Just checking for any wee work. That ball looks factory. Can't see any signs of wee work on that ball. That looks mint. That's good. That's a good sign. So I'm going to give this a clean up. What is that ball? I've got absolutely no idea. <laughs> I don't know what that ball does. Um, I think that's the main processor board because it's got a massive IC on it. So maybe, I don't know. It's got HP part numbers everywhere, so bloody God knows. But the fact it's got this feeding into it as well. It could be an input board. Could be input processing board actually. Because I think this will be an attenuator. Does it come off? It does come off. So there's another board in here. Which also got a connection on it. We'll pull that board out as well. Remove the input cable before attempting to remove the board. Okay, where is the input cable? It's 
down the side. It's right down here. <laughs> How are you supposed to get to that? That's going to be fun. But looking down there, there's some more of these Sprague caps. Um, some very customised seeds in there. I'm not seeing anything of concern there. Some ceramics and stuff in there. Ceramic dividers, looks like. It's not looking too bad though. I might just leave that one the hell alone. So let's actually lift it off. That, was, that would have made it a lot easier to get that board out, wouldn't it? <laughs> now I know. So I just noticed this top cover here was rattling around. So I just pulled this off. You can actually, this is a, a slotted hole. So you can actually lift this cable out. Which would have made getting that board out a lot easier. Anyway, there we know. But this board here also needs to come out. But it's got a comment on, on the top here saying, remove the input cable before you take the board out. So the input cable is down the side in this hole down there somewhere. I can barely see it. There must be a way of getting to it easily. I just don't know where that easily is. It may be you have to take the bottom cover off and then you can access it from, from here because it is about there. So that's probably the way to do it, take the bottom cover off and get to it. So we'll do this board first and we'll come back and pull this one apart and see what that one ends up looking like. Uh, Deoxit gold. Deoxit gold. Need some of that. Uh, lol, is that, the, is that the laughing at the cable, Chris? Yeah. That's the thing, because I haven't read the manual, I don't know how to dismantle it, so I'm just trying to fumble my way through. Um, that's sometimes a more interesting way to go. Is that still focused okay there? Yeah, ish. Alright. The problem is this thing's big, it doesn't give me much spin space left, does it? Need to get a slightly bigger full of view. <clears throat> right, so what I'm going to do, I've got my fiberglass brush here, I'm just going to quickly just run along these edges on this edge connector here, take the tarnishing off. I'm going to put some deoxy gold on it just to put a coating on that and when I plug it back in again that should help to remove tarnishing and protect this and also the connector because obviously I can't clean the connector but putting the book oh excuse me putting the board in and out a couple of times will help to clean it a little bit anyway but with a bit of deoxy on there that should help to the job now these are gold plated so you don't want to go to town with this so you just want to gently do it and let's get the oxidization off now sometimes you know, that's basically what it needs. So what I'm actually going to do is just going to run down each one like this until I see it being shiny. So it's a bit tedious, but the amount of things I've actually fixed just by giving the um, gold plate a bit of a, a wipe with this. Now, because you do get tarnishing on gold plate, it's not perfect. It resists tarnishing, but it's not completely tarnish proof. So. The amount of times I fix things just by giving these a bit of a polish up and cleaning them, it's quite surprising. The same on this side. Again, you don't want to go too much with this because you don't want to damage the gold plate, you don't want to take the gold plating off, but you do want to get that tarnishing off. You can actually see like a dimple where the connector goes on, I might need to do a little bit extra there. Two swipes seems to basically do it. Now I can see like a dimple, I'm just going to run on the edge there, because that's where the dimple is. Just one wipe, and we'll do the same on this side. Let's check this. 
no signs of nipples on this side, so it only seems one side. Okay, let's give us a bit of a spray with this. Well, I'm shaking today. I should have sun to eat, maybe. Don't actually need that much. Just gonna wipe it along there. that car back in and hopefully the dog sit us on it will help to clean it. Where's the car to sit? It's an interesting setup on their slots. It's got like a metal recess. We folded that over and we'll push this in. Just rock it in. Hopefully. There we go. I'm gonna pop it back out again. And push it in again and let's do those couple of times just to help clean the actual connector itself as well all right so that's that board there inspected and cleaned up a little bit so i'm gonna because i want to work that way i'm going to take the bottom cover off and see if we can get to this connector to get this board here out i shall come back check the chat a15 digitizer, page 5-3. Thanks, Willem. Willem? i to pronounce your name right. You think you made your first and last purchase on AliExpress, they've missed discounts for you paying by PayPal. Really? Hmm. I'll just use credit card on there. I've never had any problems, but... Um, I don't know, I've, I've just, I just used credit card. Andrew, um, Andrew, are you a Patreon supporter? I don't remember if you are or not. Um, the schematics are hard to find. They, you have to buy them. No, I had to buy this electronic version. The price wasn't too bad, actually. Um, for a place called Q Service, and also got the physical manuals, obviously, which I showed. But I did actually upload the manuals to my Patreon page. So when I published the video, or posted the video to Patreon for tomorrow, which is the teaser for this thing, TB to be major supporter, no worries. Um, then I, I, um, I attached all the manuals to that as well, so anyone as a Patreon has access to those manuals for free. So, they're, they're like, I don't know, what was it? I think it was like 25 bucks or something like that for, for the electronic manuals, something like that, from a company called Q Service, which were good, they were very good. You can also buy physical versions as well, they'll print them out for you and send them to you if you want. Um, so, you know, if, if you've got the option to use them and you want to get the manuals first and use them, or you can come on Patreon and sit off my website. I don't know, up to you. Um, but I recommend Q Service because they were really good. They were very, they were good to deal with. First time I used them, and they were really good. So I've got to figure out to get these things apart as well, so I can get this bloody thing straightened out. That's going to be a problem. Because so that is going to be an, a bit of an annoyance. It's also got this damage on the back panel. There, I didn't mention that before. Well, it shows in that video which I published. This has been banged on that corner and stowed all this in. I'm expecting I can just take the screws off and this whole back panel will come off. Um, it looks like a separate plate, so I think I'll get the whole plate off and straighten it back out again. I'm not too worried about it right now. In the meantime, let's take this bottom panel off. So I'm going to remove the bottom panel and hopefully get to that connector. The interesting thing is, it's the first time I can, can, can say it's the first time I come across this particular setup is where the voltage selector is on the bottom of the unit. So it's over here. That's what this bit is. Voltage selection switches. So they're being on the rear panel. I guess they didn't have much space and thought, well, we don't really need to access them once they're set. So underneath is fine. And 
It's just the first one I come across and beat you. Don't have a problem with it, it's just unusual. Go on. So, they're really nice circuit boards. <laughs> Here's all the voltage regulators down the side. This is power supply section, obviously, in this section here. So, um, all the regulators actually marked. They're using HP part numbers, but they're actually marked. So, you know, it gives you something to go by at least. And it's got this plastic sheet on the bottom here to protect you as well, which is a good thing. get it connector now that's good so there's a connector just over here which I've got to pop out first before I can lift out this ball so let's do that get it back in again can be interesting tight here we go lift this board out there's no levers on this one it does have some Holes here to go bold of though. Let's do that, shall we? There we go. Haven't missed anything, hopefully. Yep, sweet as that's out. So yes, attenuate adjust. So it's attenuate board. You can't even have a close look at this one. Hmm. Nasty shot could have damaged anything, yes, indeed. We really wish my desk was a bit bigger. <laughs> So look at this board. So apparently this is attenuator section in here, so input must go in, attenuated then it's processed and something on here somehow. Um, I don't know what the board number is. I'm actually looking for that now, I wasn't looking at the last one. Nothing on the top anyway. So I suspect it, see if there's anything obvious here about being bad. you're looking pretty good. It looks like it's got conformal coating everywhere as well. It's got something anyway, some kind of coating on it. It's got a jumper up here, plus 15 volt test point. So I'm not going to take this cover off. Oh, maybe I should. Maybe I should see what's in there. I should do that, shouldn't I? Just to be absolutely sure there's nothing in there which is blown up. That's a long screw, it must go through to the other side. It does. Okay. Hopefully, removing the cover doesn't upset the calibration stuff. Probably should not, I don't think it's going to be that precise anyway. It's low frequency, it's not like it's high frequency stuff where it matters that much less likely to be a problem on low frequency.
look at the back of the board yet as well and make sure there's no rework signs on the back of the board. Okay, so what we've got in here. Two trimmers, bunch of rear relays. Nothing of concern, it all looks fine. Visually it looks good. Put it back together. I'll check the back of the board in a minute. Is that screwing in or have I missed the line everything now? I think I've missed the line everything now. I've got to get back on. Actually, well, I've got that off. I might as well just look at the back of the board as well. There's some resoldering around here and there and there. It's a flux residue. Read relays. That's a relay there. Those are relays there. So someone's resoldered those relays at some point. Maybe they've been replaced. Probably not a big deal. Back in Half a minute read relays. So here you can see the flux residue run out read relay there. Can't see it there. Alright, so that's the kind of thing I'm looking out for on the balls to see if there's any rework. So it looks like two read relays have been reworked or replaced. So that's okay. Um, a bit of a mark, maybe just here too. Yes, maybe just there. There's a bit more, maybe. A blob. The conformal coating is actually quite good in this way because it actually helps to highlight when something's been reworked. Because it's always disturbed quite heavily afterwards. Anyway, that board looks generally okay apart from those re relays. So maybe there's a relay problem. Who knows? Um, but it could be they've already been repaired. So I'm going to do the same thing again on this, I'm not going to show you, but I'm just going to clean this connector up again. So every board I take out, I'm going to clean up the edge connector. Because say, the amount of times I've actually fixed gear just by cleaning the connectors up is quite surprising. <coughs> Alright, back to this. Um, yeah, I'm going to be switching between recording and chatting to you guys, so I may not be... Um, completely coherent <laughs> yeah well I'd actually like to have more test gear on my desk but I just can't fit it on there otherwise I wouldn't be able to work on test gear CV RAM checks in the service manual okay cool 
well, I'm just going to go through the visual stuff and just um, do the basics first and see if it persists. It could even be a bad connection somewhere which is causing a problem with me, you know. Anyway. Right. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Yeah, it's always a good way to go. It's quite surprising how often it fixes things. Yeah, the two wipes seems to be enough on these, the corrosionists on these. I mean, there's always a risk of you know overdoing it and taking the gold plating off. You don't want to do that. It's very thin, and these fiberglass pencils are pretty harsh. This one's actually not looking as corroded as the other one. Not as much oxidization on it. Maybe it's been cleaned with someone once already. Maybe one's enough on this one. Yes, yeah, looking alright actually. Okay. There's a pull tab on the back of this. Oh, dumb bastard. <laughs> oh, I just noticed this. I was struggling to get the board out. All right. Got a video of this, haven't I? So I just realised, I actually noticed this as well when I was cleaning, well, inspecting the board. On the back here, there's a pull tab. I could have used that to get the board out. You know, instead of levering those corners up, I could have used the pull tab. Although, these tabs are I try to be really careful with them when they're old like this because this board is very stiff to get in and out and it's likely that when you pull this tab it will break. So what I would have probably done actually, I probably would have been pulling that tab and levering up at the same time. Right, take the stress off it because I mean, when these tabs are new they're probably fine but plastics get brittle with age and heat especially. So if they've been in a warm environment it accelerates that process and they get brittle. So I'm just reseating the card like I did with that one. Just to make sure that it's had a chance to clean the actual connector up as well, the actual socket. So I'll do it a couple of times. All right. So that's that done. Now I'll pop this cable back down. I'll try and get this all clipped back together. They finish with those bolts. Look how much easier that was, and now I've got the cover off. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a very tight fit on there, it might keep falling off. We'll see. Let's put this connector on before I forget. Oh, I should put some deoxy in these connectors actually. I uh, don't really want to in case it travels down the cables. I'm going to leave them as they are. Because I've got reason to suspect them, I'm going to leave them alone. Right, that's that and done. Okay, next board. Oh, that's tight. Don't break. Oh, <laughs> I'm always really nervous about these because I've had these tabs break off before when you've got a tight, a really tight board. Um, I've had them break, so I don't. I'm really nervous about them snapping off. I've had to 3D print them before, so I actually do have a 3D print design file for these HP levers. So I can replace them if they break, but it's, I'd rather not break them off in the first place. Right. So what I should actually do is label. On here, what these boards are. So when I'm trying to troubleshoot 
it'll be easier to figure out what's going on because I'll know which ball to which because right now I don't actually have a clue I'm just looking at them anyway let's have a look at this ball this side looks fine but it does seem to be some kind of residue on the ball here like a something's got on there at some point maybe some old flux residue has been washed off or something I'm not sure So it's not as pristine as the other boards were. It's still pretty good. I don't see any rework, so maybe it's fine. So yes, an awful lot of digital going on here. So we've got some test headers on there as well. This is coming upside down. Um, now this might be the RAM board, is it? Is this the one I'm thinking of, the RAM board? Which is the RAM board? It could be this one. Or it could be the next one. Or it could be the next one. There's an awful lot of digital logic in this thing. Let's figure out which board's got the RAM on it. So I can watch out for that particular chip which I was worried about. Was it U200 or something, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so number 200 was a RAM designation designator. Uh, some here. I don't know. We'll have to look. I will need to check for that. But this side's looking fine, there's nothing really untoward here. We'll clean the knitters up. And maybe that one. I've seen it behind now, haven't I? I'm not going to check voltage regulators yet because it means powering it up. Um, I don't want to power it up yet until I finish working on what I need to do. So, you know, if it's been powered up, I've got a higher risk of getting electric shock off it. Right now, it's been sitting off for a few days, so voltages will be dis dissipated mostly, not completely in some aspects potentially. So, yeah, I'm just not going to power it up yet. Once I get to the power up stage, after I've done all this basic cleaning, and if when I get to power supplies to do the recapping, then um, then when I'm ready to power it, then I'll be looking at things like voltage regulators, measuring voltages, that sort of stuff. And if I need to, you know, I'll I'll, be, I'll go down that rabbit hole then. Um, so right now I'm just going to do just basic inspection stuff and just go through. I'm expecting it to be a lot of footage. <laughs> Anyway, have we got the visor cards for it? Not yet. I've ordered them, but they haven't arrived. There's a guy on eBay selling them, and I've, I have purchased them, but they've not turned up yet. So, hopefully you're not too far away. If I do need to use riser cards, they will be coming. Now, I do actually have some other riser cards. I don't know if they're going to be compatible or not um, from other HP gear. I don't know if... Um, if that's possible, I think they're different. I think they're a different pin count, so I'm not quite sure. But I have ordered the cards for it, so I do have them coming on the way. Right, do the same on these. I think these, yeah, these aren't as tarnished as the ones on this board here. This board is worse. Maybe because it's close to the outside of the chassis, it's got more exposure to the environment. With these a bit more shielded from it, I don't know, maybe. It's got one stroke of the brushes enough on these ones. Until I get to these canisters, I'm wrong. These ones need two.
Yeah, this side's clean, this side, that's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be quite a long process doing this, unfortunately, but we shall see how we go. See if we can get this a bit faster, shall we? I end up getting stuff everywhere, and if these chips, we care about that. These dioxy cans I spray really well. A bit too well really. Okay, let's put this one back in. The other way around. Are super tight. In a way, it's a good thing, though. No? At least you know you've got a good connection because they're nice and secure. Right, is that ball done? Next one. Let's put out the next board. Now, I've reseated that one in to clean all that one up. This one's coming out a little bit easier. Let's have a look. Anything bad on here? There's a bit of dust in this area here. Get that wipe off. Otherwise, looking alright. It says revision A RAM. Well, EPROM. Get it right. Okay. So it's looking basically fine. So it looks a little bit of dust. Check the other side. And no signs of rework. This board looks pristine. Excellent. I'll clean this one up, put it back in. Um, a bit close to day jobs we do for How's the Hobby Year. Uh, well, me doing videos and this YouTube stuff is completely different to my day job, so this is my this is my relaxation. <laughs> well, unless it goes wrong. Your repair is finished, is it, Andre? Andre? Um, Docks of gold more expensive than D5? I think it was about the same price. I think it's basically just less harsh. It's not as harsh as a standard D5. It's a bit more gentle. So it's meant for... Well, obviously gold connections. Um, yeah. I think it just cleans a bit more gently as well. Hmm. So you've got these series. All right, so general purpose cleaning, gold plated, S series for metal surfaces. 
Syrian protection. F is lubricant. So I have the F5 and D5 and I've got the shield as well which is the S5 which I haven't used yet. Um, so I don't know I've got all of them. <laughs> I might mean I've got all of them. Does it? It does. Hey Nassim, how's it going? Alright. Let's give this a clean, put it back in. These are actually looking pretty good. I'm still going to run along. I might just uh, do once across the edge. This one's actually looking pretty good. Again, I can actually see the tarnishing come off. Maybe it's not. Okay, all good. I, I brushed out most of the lighting on it. Swipes do enough. Yeah, so it'd be interesting if this. Uh just clean these kits up and stuff like that, and the power supplies will fix it. It'd be nice if it does a nice simple repair, but I I am suspecting a RAM battery problem. You know, as soon as it's the very codes it's giving us for RAM, I'm suspecting that's going to be where the issue is. I do like is why they've got the coloured indicator at one end and the black indicator at the other, so you know which way around it goes. What I like even more is when they actually put the um, colour indicator on here as well, so you you know, orange to orange kind of thing. That way you can't actually put the card in the wrong slot either. yellow card, now the orange one's back in, oh that's tight, okay, now this is the card that um, Martin Lawton had issues with, Morton, Morton, um, with this trimmer here, so I'm hoping I don't have the same problem in this one. We shall see. But again, this is, seems to be quite common. The ones I've seen, they're never fully populated, which is quite interesting. But look at this massive IC here. Look at the size of this beast. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> that is probably the biggest IC I've ever seen. Wow. Check the chat. Yeah, 
yeah, I always use the uh, F5 on the faders and trimmers and stuff like that. I don't use D5 on those, I use the fader F5 stuff. Because it's, it's meant for that. You reckon this is a RAM one, do you? Um, who wants to go back and find out which RAM chip that was supposed to be? That 0726 error references the RAM chip. Was it RAM F? Was that the bottom? Wasn't it RAM F? RAM chip F? Someone want to find out which one that is? And that page I showed before, wherever the hell that was. Was that section 655, was it? Using the Shield series for pots, dear. Okay. I thought the F series meant for pots. That's why it's fader. Hmm. Anyway. Let's so spit this board. Obviously, at this point, I've done absolutely no measurements whatsoever. <laughs> so, there could be shorted power rails or God knows what going on. Don't know. But visually, this one looks fine on this side. Oh, that looks mint. Um, okay, bit of record footage. So, I was expecting the card now and this looks fine. The back of the ball doesn't like any rework. Front of the ball looks fine as well. But uh, I can't see anything wrong here. It looks fine. So I was going to clean the connectors up just like I did the other times and put it back in. No, this doesn't make a particularly exciting video, I'm afraid. It's not all glamour, you know, being a YouTuber. <laughs> it's all fame and glory. Also rock the boards and I put them in just to help take pressure off the main board because obviously you're putting all that force onto the logic board well the main daughter board on the main daughter board the motherboard at the bottom there right I don't know distribution board I don't know what you call it um, you're putting all that stress onto that pushing onto that when you put doing these so that's why I, I do tend to go side to side just to try and keep the stress off it and try and not push too much on the entire board. Better and better as that loop is getting in there, that cleaner's getting in. Starting to slide a little bit better. Okay, 
but now let's pull the green board out. That yellow one's all been cleaned up and put in. When you pull boards out, I always pull them out gently in case there's a cable connected off it, doesn't it? Like? This one looks interesting. More EPROMs over here. Hmm. Chit chat. Uh, A forty board processor was it? Okay. They used to recommend Vaseline, did they? Really? The Oxit website quote for reference: the Oxit Shield has zero percent cleaning action. <laughs> so it's purely just to protect it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fast cars. That makes more sense. Yeah, the NAS is going crazy. I actually had a drive play up, and I actually purchased a new drive. This is a bit of a story. Actually, I'm going to swap swap screens with this. So, I my NAS has got three eight terabyte drives in it, and I've got Seagate iMorph drives in it. Now, the last drive I bought was an iMorph Pro, and that was two years ago. And I put that in, got them going because I gradually updated because it's a four bay NAS. And I'm only using three bays of it, so I'm gradually keeping updated so I can actually always have expansion space and these iMorph Pro drive which I bought two years ago started giving a problem with smart reporting so the actual smart failure occurred by using extended testing the, the um, iMorph testing was fine didn't give any errors but the smart testing reported failures and so the, the NAS considered the drive bad so I thought right, okay there's an opportunity to upgrade the drive to a bigger one because I'm, I'm using about 70% of the capacity something like so right bought a 12 terabyte drive not cheap believe me not cheap I'm going to show you how it turned up put it somewhere right in this box right I think okay that's not too bad Open up, these are the packaging material on top. Okay, get it on the top, pull it out. There's a drive in the bottom of the box. No protection whatsoever around the drive. The, the box is all dented in on the corners, it's been thrown around a bit. So the drive is basically thrown around the ground and, and thrown over the place on the way here, as if there's no box there, you know. But this is stuck on the top. This drive doesn't work. 12 terabyte drive, many hundreds of dollars worth of money, doesn't work. It's broken. So I'm taking it back. I'm actually going to go to the store when I go back to work next week. I'm going to go drive up there. I think I've emailed them about it and I haven't replied. Funny that. I'll be driving up there and um, because it's near my work, I can actually go there before work. I'm going to have to go up there. Take this back to them and say, swap it out for a new one because this one doesn't work. Um, of course, they're shitty packaging. I'm going to show them the packaging as well. I've complained about this multiple times. And I've done videos, on my mailbag videos. I've shown that before as well, saying that hey, the packaging's rubbish. You know, yeah. You got five NAS boxes for them purely for backups. Yeah, I've got another NAS sitting over here actually. Just out of shot, but there's another nest sitting there. Um, anyway, to continue my story, that's one part of it is that the fact that they sent a drive badly packaged and the drive doesn't work. It just buzzes every five seconds, you power it up, put it in my NAS, it hangs the NAS up for about two minutes when the NAS starts to boot. When it gives up trying to access the drive, it gives up and then boots. Um, both NAS has done the same. I put it in my computer, my computer wouldn't boot up. So the, the drive is dead, right? So um, and, and I've checked the compatibility as well to make sure both these NASs support that drive, and they do. 
so I know it's not the compatibility problem. Anyway, the drive which is failing, I thought, well, I did have an issue with the power glitch. We had some, a lot of power surges in the past few weeks. And they're around the time where the reporting said it failed. So I thought, right, I wiped the drive, that particular drive, I did a secure erase in it, so I did a full erasure of the drive. Then re-ran that test again, this time it passed. So I'm thinking, maybe it was actually a false reporting, that drive failing. Because the drive's only two years old, and it's got a five-year warranty on it. So if it had died, I could have actually um, sent the drive back to Seagate and got a replacement drive. It's covered. Um, but I've done that, done that retesting, and it's now rebuilding the, the NAS drive system. That drive has passed its test, so it's now being reincorporated back into the NAS. Um, so that's what it's doing right now. That's why it's clicking away like crazy, is because it's um, um, copying a dial between the drives to make sure it's got three drives used again. Is there just two? Um, Rich YouTube so I can afford it. <laughs> yeah, things with NAS is not so much the actual NAS itself, which isn't that expensive. You, know, you might pay, I don't know, I think about five, five to eight hundred bucks, or maybe a thousand bucks, New Zealand for a NAS, something reasonable. Um, the drives are the expensive, but that's the expensive. But um, they are getting better, obviously. But I mean, I think I, that drive, that twelve terabyte drive, I think that was something like six hundred dollars. For that drive, uh. yeah. Anyway, back to this repair. No, it's not. What we want. We want that one. Well, the oxy is certainly expensive. Uh. Anyway, let's clean this one up. And we go to the power supply section very soon. We've got, I think we've got one more board to do, have we? Yeah, one board after this. Let me start into the power supply section. That's where it should get a bit more interesting. That car which had a dust now, I should have cleaned the dust off, didn't I? I should have done that, I didn't do it. This has got some residue along here, it's a bit sticky. So this board here has got some residue on this connector here. It actually feels slightly sticky as well, like maybe it's some flux residue or something. Or something's been spilt on it maybe. Curious. But let's see some signs around here as well. A bit of dust up there. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Anyway, this one doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to clean it up, put it back together. What oh, this one is? This one could be a rainbow. I don't know. If there's residue on this board and this is the own board, maybe it's part of the problem. Okay, green tab. What does it say? Anything on the board here? Clocks. Triggers up here. It's got a shielded section over there. Got some transistors and some more caps behind that. Looks like some op amps. Let's pull this cover off here. I think I need to look on, under there. 
If we'll put the dioxide on, get rid of it. Let's take this cover off. Okay, that looks fine in there. Yeah, looks alright, a little bit dust. Yeah, looks fine. Put it back on again. Show around it went. What's it on that way around? My cats are very vocal today. You probably hear them. It's not lined up. That's not lined up. Come on, lined up. I had to put one of the cats down the other day. Wife's cat, her last cat. She had three cats when she came here. And I had three cats. When we, you know, we first got together, kind of thing, a few you know, years ago. And uh, she had to put down her last cat last week. But, uh, it was deteriorating, it's getting quite old and stuff, you know. And uh, obviously, you know, this thing. Putting him in a hell to sleep is always a bit of a sad time. Wasn't eating, it's getting very thin and not doing very well, kind of thing. So, got no choice really, put out his misery. Real shame, but you know, what you have to do when you're hunting animals. Fortunately, sometimes you've got to make those tired decisions. Oh, God, it's gone everywhere. <laughs> Uh, don't want underneath the chips. <laughs> I might take some alcohol in that one there. <laughs> Try and flush it out. I don't even want deoxy underneath the chips. Let's wait, it just dries a bit more. So the problem with dioxide things is that the bloody spray way too much sometimes. Come on, now try to be really careful, it's not doing enough. Alright, here we go. Put this one back in. Just 
taking on time to get this thing done, isn't it? Way longer than I thought it would. Might just come from me, mate. It's always underestimated how long time it's going to take. No, my wife is always giving me trouble for that. I'll, I'll do something and she goes, oh, she's going to be five minutes and three hours later I'll turn up. <laughs> Can I blame her? One board left to do, I'll just come back and check the chat first. <sighs> oh, I missed quite a bit. Um. Use Pro Power Contact Cleaner. Shield is good for get, to get a pot that's a little scratchy, working smoothly and like new again. Okay, and it lasts right. I have to keep that in mind. <laughs> what you believe in, like a religion, yeah. Hey, Danish native, how's it going? Asus laptop, that's what you fixed, was it? Okay. No, project, uh, unicellular project, really. Okay. He chocks the birds. <laughs> when we get electron screw, uh, electric screwdriver, I actually have one, but it's set in my other lab. And one I've, I've got one in here, but it's a really fine one. It's good for doing small screws. These screws are a bit too big for it. I'm thinking about getting another one. Actually, it did cross my mind the other day. This kind of waste goes every year exactly. <laughs> Chip's gonna be fast now. Yeah, it might have different was for <laughs> that. That chip might be faster than the rest, so the timing goes out. So that doesn't work. <laughs> Don't the cans have a valve and you twist the nozzle? Do they? Do they? You sure? Oh crap, it does too. Bloody hell. I never knew that. Look at that. Low, medium, high. Jesus. <laughs> Well, I learned something today. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> oh dear. Damn it. <laughs> See, what I tend to do, right, is I when I have these cans sitting on my shelf. I like have them all turned so I can read what the can is, right? so I'm going to make sure I just pick up the right can. So that means what I tend to do is have these twisted around, facing away, so they're not in the way of the other cans. <laughs> Hold on, let me check the other ones. Um, well, these ones, uh, maybe it's because of these ones. These ones don't have it, do they? This type, this don't have it? I don't know. There's no mark inside this one. This one seems to have it, this one doesn't. Hmm, maybe that's what it is. Maybe you can let me off. This says this one can has it. <laughs> uh, Bosch Progo. Okay. Well, what I'd likely do is um, get one from probably AliExpress or Banggood, maybe. Actually, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I should have a bunch of stuff coming from Banggood, actually. Uh, whose channel was I on? I think it was Judy and Lett. Was it Judy and Lett? Can't think whose channel it was. It might have been that one. Um, I'm trying to remember now. I think it was Judy and Lett's channel. I'm not 100% sure. He had a multimeter and I said I should... because um, he, he, That's right. Yeah, it was him. Because he, he didn't know about accuracy and things like that. And he didn't have any... like calibration type 
gear the you know to do accuracy checks on this multimeter you'd be given to do a review on and I commented on that and it, it sort of occurred to me that what I could do is do like a multimeter shootout where you get a whole bunch of these budget multimeters and basically do reviews on them all individually and do a multimeter shootout to compare them all using my calibrators I've got calibrators so I could check the accuracy of these meters and see how accurate they are and then I thought that would be a really useful video for people to know, you know, how accurate is this multimeter I missed? This multimeter costs 20 bucks. Is it accurate? That's a question which isn't really answered that much. So I thought that would be a good video to do. So I've requested Banggood send me this stuff. Like, they've been communicating with me quite slowly recently. They've been really, I think they're just overloaded. I can't say. I think they're overloaded with work. I think they're really busy. So it's taken me oh, six weeks to actually get communication with them and actually get stuff sorted out um, but I've got apparently they've agreed to it they've said yes we're going to send them to you so they're going to send me I think it's about six multimeters and I'm going to have a play with them so that could be interesting and because they're, they're budget ones they're cheaper ones so it's not like the stuff I'm normally playing with you know hundreds of dollars worth these are you know 20 30 dollar meters kind of thing you know or maybe I think the cheapest I think the most expensive one's about 80 bucks, I think, something like that. From memory, I can't be, it might be less than that. Anyway, get this next board out. All right, let's pull the next board out here. This feels pretty tight. Oh, that's, I can feel the clips bending. <laughs> it's never a good sign. Let's do one end at a time and try and pull the middle of the board at the same time. That works better. Sometimes it helps. It's actually binding in there. It's actually quite tight in there. That's interesting. Why? Makes you want the chassis slightly twisted or something. It was binding on the edge. Anyway, so look at this board. Ah, oh, that's why. Look, it's got this finger on the back of it. That's why it's tight. It's driving on the back. Extra shielding. Got the back of the board. Looks. Oh, that's interesting. This chip has been reworked over here. Looks okay apart from that. And that soldering doesn't look that good, to be honest. That looks like it needs doing again. You see that? The solder's just not really there. Barely soldered those pins. Oh, come on. So I reckon that's something I should do is actually resolder those. Those look dodgy. Let's try differently, hold on. See that? Just like, nah, nah. Yeah, and I put a soldering. That is what we're doing. Yeah, sound effects. That is crap, exactly. The new cans don't have it. Oh, right. So I can sell more, isn't it? I suppose, you know, if you waste more, they sell you more. You know? That's why they can spray so damn much out. Anyway. Let's fix this. Hard bit is this is me soldering tends to get in the way of the camera. So it's always a bit of a problem.
Right, so we solve this chip. Put some fresh flux on. I could put my probably should clean it first actually, but uh I've got the flux on in here. It's a bit far away, isn't it? Let's get a bit closer. So I've got my iron set to 300 degrees. Got this massive tip on it though. We shall see how this goes. Let's use um, silver solder. Let's use the good stuff. And oh, I should be using my fan, but it's over there. And my hand's in the way of the camera. Of course it is. There you go, still like this. Compromise. Yeah, it's some pretty awful soldering. I'm really surprised, you know, someone's working on something like this. Be, I thought the soldering better than that. Someone's repairing something like this. It's a bit of high quality. Higher skill set, I should say. Anyway, here we go once I've finished. At least then we know that this chip will be working properly. I mean, is it this case someone's actually come around and replaced this chip, or have they been they've taken it out and put it back in again? I don't know. Also, inspect it once I've done this and cleaned it up and make sure that there's no damaged traces and that sort of stuff. It could be. Right. A lot of flux on here. <laughs> anyway, what was there was no good. See if I solved it or not. Yeah, I think so. Get a thing in focus for you. Yeah, certainly better than what was there. Okay. Let's check the other side. So this chip looks different to the rest. So it's been replaced. It's not an original HP part number, so that chip has been replaced. Okay. I'm just trying to have a close look at the actual traces and make sure they look alright. See, there's flags on this side as well, and it's clean too. See, there's pins there, that's not good. Get that off. Right, 
last thing you want is flux eating through the circuit board, eating through the traces because it's you don't know who, you know what flux they use, to, what, you know whether it's an acid flux or something like that. You just don't know. So you might find that what's on there is actually could be corrosive. So hopefully I haven't used an acid flux, but it's certainly it's certainly possible. So best to just clean it off and do what I can to get rid of it. But the fact that this thing was still sealed, you know, it had the seals on it still. So this repair was obviously successful because otherwise it wouldn't have been sealed up and recalibrated after that point, right? So it was obviously working, but it wasn't great, was it? It could have failed again at some point in the future. Maybe that's what's wrong with it now. Yeah, it's looking ten, ten times better. Checking the rest of the ball so it did distract me away from looking at the rest of it. But it's looking fine. So I think we're good now. Put it back in. After I've cleaned up these connections. Turn it back off again so you can hear me a bit better. The fan probably drowns me out a bit. Uh, Alright, check out this. Died going wild, yeah, I watch him sometimes. That's good stuff. <laughs> Done using a willow gun, yeah. Maybe, maybe you didn't clean up because I were glad to get the thing working, maybe I don't know. Glass slinger. Um I don't know, glass thing I, I don't think I've seen those. I don't think I've seen that channel. Maybe. Oh, actually, no. I think I have seen him. But, yeah, I think I didn't like his work, so I didn't subscribe. I think. I don't know. I can't remember. It's what you're saying rings a bell, actually. So, yes, maybe. Hey, Rob. Yes, um, I should cross-check that, actually, shouldn't I? I do have a HP cost check listing of various parts. I do have some information. Um. Yep, it's RAM, is it? Could be remembering that completely wrong about that guy. I really don't remember. It, it rings a bell vaguely. I, anyway, right. Let's clean this board up. Put it back in. Do this edge connector. Then we can get onto the power supply section. Once we check that out, we can power it up. Oh, I need to check my phone and see what those emails are. In case it's that guy getting back to me. And there's definitely some stuff around here. Oh, 
got these emails in case they're important. So I've got 10 emails. Ah, that's okay. Auction's finished, which didn't sell. Yeah. That's fine. Nothing important. Sort me later on. If anyone's in and want to buy some test gear, let me know. <laughs> Someone trade me. Well, it was until the auction's finished again. Any test gear that I sell goes on trade me, it doesn't go back on eBay. eBay is just too hard for me to use. Well, I can imagine it's too hard for me to deal with, so I don't use it. I use trade me. But obviously, then the market's much smaller because I'm not dealing with international, I'm only doing local. Which means I can't sell things for the same price that it'd be worth internationally. But I don't have the whole hassle of trying to get stuff shipped and dealing with all that stuff and potentially having it damaged on the way there and then losing the money completely. Right. And here we can see it's my desk. Right, have to wait a second. You changed. Right. And maybe focus it too, eh? That's really tight, this one. Really tight. It's probably the tightest one of the lot. Like I said before, I do this whole in and out thing of the sockets to clean up the socket contacts. Okay. Power supply side. Four one six four RAM ICs. Okay, so that ball might be the RAM ball which has given that RAM error. Interesting. I have to look at it. Yo, I reckon this glass thing is a good channel. Okay, maybe I'll go back and look at it. I mean, I don't remember very well. I just vaguely remember, remember the name. Maybe it's glasswork I saw it. Maybe I saw that and thought that was interesting. Maybe maybe that's what it was. Like his own valves. Yeah, I must remember it wrong. I must be thinking of something else. Sphere. Sphere. My trade me name. Is the death pom? Your poor name is Prince Coleman. So RAM, yes, okay, so Sphere, I'm not familiar with Sphere, probably might need to give me a URL or something. I do have a bunch of cost reference information which I found and put to one side. 
sphere, okay. I think I found a website. Sphere.bc.ca. That sound right, Rob? All right. Okay. They even have spare parts. Nice. Okay. That's worth bookmarking. Electronic stuff. Yeah, cool. Let's put more for later on. First pet's name and mother's maiden name is your pawn name. <laughs> you tried Def Pom, nothing showed up. Interesting. Well, it's the Def Pom, right? So, T H E D E F Pom. Right, so. Oh, anyway, and he stopped making me say the word porn in my bloody videos. I might end up getting flagged by YouTube. <laughs> Who knows? So, shall I put this cover back on again and jinx it? What do you reckon? I'm going to put the cover back on again. Which goes around that way. I think. That appears to be correct. Right. Um, now where to put the screws? There you are. So the power supplies we are expecting to see stuff being a bit more interesting. But we did, we did find something. Yeah. We did find something in the end, which is good. So that's why it pays to look at those things. Why I may not have found that problem. And that may be what's even wrong with it. Maybe those bad solder joints. Maybe that's what it is. Who knows? Because it, like it says, it's, you know, this particular chip, chip number, was it chip F? Identified as, isn't it? That's what showed as RAM F. So, although it said that, it may be a self-test is wrong because the way it's diagnosing it has got an error, you know? So, it's possible. Oh, it evens up. Should be recording this, shouldn't I? Check one more time. Okay. So let's pull apart the power supply section now. I've put the cover back on here. That's about to have jinxed it. It's about to have something go wrong there now. And then we won't be able to see what goes wrong because if the smoke could be contained, you won't be able to see where it came from. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, I've had this thing powered up once already, so I'm not too concerned about this stuff blowing up because I know it was kind of working, but obviously we need to look at this bit because this is where the next problem is likely to be. So it does have indicator LEDs in here. Now they're actually marked in this case saying uh, primary voltage, plus 5 volt voltage, non-isolated high voltage, and isolated high voltage. 
So the indicators on this board here. So it does have its own monitoring built in. But right now, I don't care about that. I just want to pull it apart, inspect it, check things, see if I can see any problems. I'm going to start in the same direction. I'm going to start at the back this time. So I'm just basically moving across the unit. I'll do this big board here last. Now, there's lots of caps on here, so these potentially still have voltage in them. So I need to remember not to sort of forget to check those. So we'll get this backboard out first. I don't see any connections on there. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that, it's got a battery on it. Ooh, three volt lithium cell. We need to check that. It's got some dip tents on there as well. Or are they, I don't know, this has got this color banding system. I'm not sure what these are. I haven't seen those before. They could be tantalums, just using colour banding designations instead of the numbering uh, printed on them. They look like tantalums, but uh, yeah, I know that colour banding was a system that was used years ago. I just don't really come across it very often, in fact, ever. So, could be nothing. Anyway, let's have a close look. I'm not going to be careful. I've got to be careful about not putting the ball down, showing out in the battery, in case it's still okay. Um, but no burn tents. Tents look fine. Connector is oxidised, like the other ones are. Back of the board never been touched. And it's factory. So let's check this battery. It's bound to be flat in it. That's something I should be doing, eh, if I'm doing this stuff. I should do this. I should definitely do this. You'll see what I mean. Give me a second, get this set up. So, bottom panel there, you can see in the overlay that I've got a volt meter re reading from my signal. I don't know if it's big enough, but it's there. It's a test controller software that I've been playing with. I wrote some scripts for it for some other gear. I did some for the East Tester ET4401 and the SDL1020XE and 1030X and stuff. Um, electronic load. I've got some more I want to do too actually. But uh, for now that's what I've got. Let's just get these leads on this meter. Right. So let's see what we've got for this battery. Is it still alive? It is, but it's backwards. Why is it backwards? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. That is 3 volts. 3.01 volts. That battery still looks okay. That's good. Um, I really expected that to be the other way around. That's coming as negative. But it's marked positive there. That's weird. Okay, so it's marked positive. They caught me out. Watch out for that one. But yeah, battery's still good. Excellent. So let's clean this board up, put it back in. 
Could you uh, see that voltage in while I did that? Hey, Dad. <laughs> Dad, I haven't seen you here before. Welcome to the channel. You seem to be a new person. Make sure you subscribe while you're here. You come back again later on. Click the bell icon so you're notified about new videos. I publish them, which is a couple of times a week. So what I'm doing here, Dan, in case you haven't seen us, is repairing a piece of test gear. Well, working through a repair process, I should say. I'm just going through doing visual inspections, anything obvious I'm fixing, and then um, I have to do diagnostics. Oops, I have to do diagnostics after that once I've finished um, doing all the basic stuff. So I was cleaning up his connectors because these, these are gold plate connectors, but they do tarnish because these are 30 odd years old and you do get tarnishing on gold after a period of time I'll put it back in so I've cleaned those Connect all the edges up. So reseat the card a few times, clean the up again. It's all looking good. So we've got three boards left, apart from the main logic board, the main board, or the main motherboard, I suppose, which does have some stuff on it, but not much. Um, there's some capacitors, resistors, a few bits around. Obviously the main regulators and stuff here as well, so um, something I could do after I've done these power supply boards and check those out is actually do some resistance measurements or something on the outputs of these regulators and check for any shorts. Could potentially do that. Um, we'll see. It's main fuse down here in case it ever blows. Let's get this next board out, which has a connector on here. Where's that going to? Next board over, so let's unplug this connector. Is this no wires there, or is it just getting snagged? I think it's getting snagged. Yep, there's no connector. Just in the bottom there. Let's get that out. Mustn't get these mixed up. Come on, how'd you come? So, this is your big light board. IRF four forty. Bit of dust on here, I thought it was a Cracked through it for me, it's just a bit of dust. And this board is visually looking okay. Back of the board is also untouched. So I've been, it looks like I've been lucky with this one, hasn't it? Much in the way of repair work, which is always a good thing. Clean these up. Actually, I'll stop recording now. You get the idea. K 
camera's a bit too high, isn't it? I'm not going to worry about doing actual testing just yet as far as checking components and that sort of stuff because I may be wasting my time because I might find out where I, I might find something which is a smoke, smoking gun which shows what's going on or um, something else. So I'm going to put this over here and I'll pull this second board out as well. So they plug together so I was up on plugging it back in again isn't it? This one's a bit tight, really tight. Come on, let's go. Wow, that is really tight, that ball. Am oh, I missing something? I don't believe so. Nothing broke, yay. This board has some rework. So I just pulled out the board next to it because it's got these connectors to plug in between the two boards. So I thought I'd just do both boards at once and then I can put them both together back at the same time. This board's had some rework over here. I don't know what that is yet, I haven't turned it around. But it has had some work and it's still flux residue. And those are just wires, wire connections from this transformer here. And that's an interesting setup. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well. I think this board will require a closer look than the first one. Seems to have a capacitor on there, some bits and pieces. And this is a board which got referenced a lot on the EV blog forum about having bad parts. Remember C, was it uh, CR210 was it, or CR200 or something like that, I think they mentioned as being a problematic diode. Anyway, it's the number they mentioned, but um, we'll have a look around it. I might just test all the diodes on this board because they, these are known for being problematic, so I'm just going to do a quick go over this board and actually do some testing. Get some space. We check that capacitor. See if it's dead. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing on that. So I should get the ESR tester going as well. I should have come up on the screen. I think that should show up. Or not? I'm pretty sure it's still connected up. Hold on. Um, maybe I need to restart this. Hold on. It's complaining about the ESR meter not working. <laughs> really? It's not recognise the ESR meter. That's annoying. I 
What's going on here? It was working last time I tried it. Oh, nothing worth fixing that now. That's a shame. And I'm still recording. Oh, he's on my YouTube account, alright. Oh, Chris is gone. Catch you later, Chris. Long wait for any possible magic smoke. Well, I had to keep all the suspense going, don't we? to get the ESR tester showing up. It was showing up last time I did it. I must be doing something wrong. Maybe I've unplugged something since then. Who knows? It was working. Now let's do some diet tests. Um, hopefully. Uh, of course I'm on remote now. I've got to do it from the computer. <laughs> uh, here we go, diode test. Let's check diodes first. And let's give you a better shot as well. Why is it ta leads are always tangled up? I don't know what you do with them. Let's go around and do some diode testing. I'll let you know if anything goes wrong because I'm using my other meter for the live stream. That's showing nothing. My meter's not updating on screen. Why is the meter not updating? I think I've crashed it. <laughs> Let's see if we get the meter. This is terrible. I think because I was pushing buttons on the front of the meter and it's got like a half mode thing where I change states or something. I'll get it going again. Is that link broken? And it's not updating on screen. Come on. Yeah, test control on this restart again. Mm, I've got to get used to this software a bit better. Use handheld, I might do. Okay. There we go. We should be back again. We are. We are back again. Just not your army, unfortunately. All right. Okay. Let's check in. I'm holding millivolts. Mm. Probably doing stuff in circuit. It says 104. Not much different, is it? 41. 128, a bit of a difference. As long as I don't get it like a dead short, then I'm probably just going to be not too worried about it. 91, 15, Good differences in each direction, so that's probably fine. 133, 33, 113. Uh, three. Of course, it's got circuitry around and it's messing up the readings. That's not that unusual. So that's doing 
something else. 90. 9. That's a resistor. Got some signal dies over here. I'm getting these readings. Got something in voltage mode, not bloody diode mode. Why is it not in diode mode? Ugh. That makes more sense. One of those weird readings. Damn it! Let's still a bit of video do it again. Alright, let's check these, see if it makes sense. Open. Open. Make sure it actually does show. Yes, it does. Open. Yep. Open. 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 That's good. Open. 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 Sort these around. In our direction. 0.56, yeah. 0.42. Five, five, four, two, five, six, point two. It's quite low that one. Must be shocky. Point five six or five nine. Point five nine. Point five nine. So far, so good. Got another one up here. It's point five two and. something it's got a capacitor near it so it's probably affecting it there's a bridge up here but looks of it 0 0.58 0 0.58 big gap there yeah, that's looking fine I think yep open open so far so good got some more down here 0 0.58 0 0.58 open open Open, open, four seven point four. Well, oh, it's looking pretty good so far. Open, 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 and open four four. Five, 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 five. It's looking good. The dies look fine. So that's a bonus. Nothing looks like it's blown. You've got that regulator there or something. That's showing a short between those two pins. Those two pins there showing a short, which is interesting. I need to find out what it is. CR100, I think that was something which is a common failure point. I wonder if that's what's wrong with it. Ah, oh, no, hold on. We got diet. We got it goes to these windings here. It's going to transform the windings, so the windings will be showing up. So it's probably fine. It's going to transform the windings, so the windings will be showing up. Okay, let's do a resistance measurement instead. And I can't do it for the meter, I have to do it for the computer. Resistance. Working hopefully. Looks like it. All good. Yep. <coughs> so let's measure resistance then because if it's going through a transform winding, we should see some resistance. Instead of just a dead short. I'm not getting much. Probes together and getting point. Yeah, this is tiny, absolutely tiny. I need to do four wire really for this. Um, Forty-seven milliohms together. 
with the, with the lead resistance, 47 milliohms, and across, getting 38 milliohms. It's actually lower across it. <laughs> so that must be because of the coil, so we'll go around the other way. Now I'm getting 37 milliohms again. So, well, it's negative, isn't it? So it was slightly higher, yes, because of because it's a negative reading, not a higher reading. That's why. So I'll say 37 and what? Together was 47, and it costs us 36. So that's 11 milliohms resistance. Hmm, is that short? <laughs> now I have to know for sure it's take the part out, but I think it's probably fine. I might just go around and clean up some of this flux. There's a flux over here as well on these other wire connections. I'll see what I did with wires that I start clean up the flux. It's probably factory. So I'll clean it up anyway and we'll come on. But I think it's basically right. I'll check the capacitor. That's what I need to do. And I think I've got the wrong test tube on here. So I finally got this new flash test tube, but now it's not going to work for this capacitor. Change leads. Shame this isn't going to show up on screen. The whole reason I did the whole test controller thing for doing live stream testing and showing on it. I don't know why it's not showing up. That's really weird. Anyway, uh, stick that on there. Stick that on there. I'm getting 2.1 millifarad. Dissipation point zero five, ESI point zero three, and it's a two thousand microfarad. So yeah, that's fine. That cap looks all right still. So I just tested this capacitor here. It came out as a, a good value. It's a two thousand microfarad cap. It came out at two point one millifarad. And ESR stuff like that was fine, so that cap at the moment is at least still still good. What voltage is that thing? I can't quite see what it is. Fifty volt, fifty volt, two thousand microfarad. Um, twenty five volt, forty volt. Mm, not quite enough, but that, it might be fine. Depends on the voltage that you're on across that cap. Anyway, I don't actually know, but um, yeah, I'll do a capacitor. I could potentially put in there if I need to, but I think it's fine. I don't think I'm going to worry about it right now. Move on. Oh, there's other caps up here. Must have get those two. Got two more caps up here as well, which are 100 microfarad. Uh, so 0 to 50 volt, interesting. Um, both the same, so I'll measure those. Just going to stick the probes on here. I should make sure I discharge first. They probably are, but let's do it anyway. Just to be sure. You can be a cam shot. That's 224 microfarad in parallel. Yes, they are. So it's going to be hard to measure them like that. Um, ESR in parallel. It's 0.3 ohms. Yeah. Dissipation 0.04. They're probably fine. I don't suspect those at the moment. They're probably all right. Clean this board up, put it back in. Check the chat. Hey Mako, how's it going?
So it's actually quite reassuring to not have found anything serious yet. You know, I've only found a couple of little minor things. Nothing really of concern. Which is good, that means I might have actually got myself a good one. It's always a benefit. It's a bit more corroded than the other ones were. Well, oxidised. Again. Now there's actually a capacitor on the logic board down there, or on the main board. I might have to do some testing from the bottom. Yeah, there's some other bits, I must say, there are some components on that main board there which could be problematic. We shall see. Slot it back in. It's super tight. Okay, that's in. Okay, happy with that. Let's put this other ball back in here. Still, yeah, I'll put a bit more deoxid on there, gives it a bit more moisture. Just dry it a little bit. I have my breakfast. <laughs> Stick in there. My, my breakfast bar thing. I need to do that. I'm getting a bit hungry. I'll do that before I get on to the next board, I think. Pop this in here somewhere so it's not bridging out too badly. Right, so that leaves us one board left to do. Well, and also the main board. You can see the size of these caps on here, they're massive, they're basically full height. From there, right to here. Massive caps. Oh, those are good. <laughs> they'd be expensive. Right. This is like a pretty basic board. It's like a power supply smoothing board, basically, filtering. It's got a bunch of reductors and capacitors, so that's LC circuit to help smooth out some power supply. That's what that would be doing. Let's have my lunch. Alright. Munches, yeah. It's full of caps, yeah. Well, there's not that many caps in it, actually. It's quite surprising. There's not as many as I thought there'd be. What age is it? Um, good question. It'd be mid eighties. Mmm. Good question, Fred. Where's the wife of the coffee?
What's your nod as a sign? Um, looks like 2549A0287. 2549, I don't know what you'd have, I should look for day codes, shouldn't I? I haven't been doing that. Hmm. Nineteen eighty five, two chip the over eighty five on it. Eighty three, eighty six, eighty six, eighty six, eighty five. So it's not older than 86. But I think you can work out the serial numbers from the, uh, work out the age from the serial numbers. But I thought it was based on 1960. That's like the datum for the serial numbers. So if it's 25, 2549, wouldn't that be, if it's 1960, it'd be 1985, wouldn't it? But I've got 1986 part in here. So I don't know. Take your guess. Hmm. I'm a bit annoyed about the ET441 not showing up. I did have everything working all at once before. So I don't know why it's not showing up. Ah, oh, hold on. I know. Might be because I'm an idiot. It could be because I'm an idiot, yes. I think it's because I'm an idiot. Let me restart test controller. Right. Solve that problem. The ET4401 LCR meter runs off USB. And I didn't have the USB cable plugged in. <laughs> that explains why it wasn't working. I think 86 was the highest number I saw, and the serial number says 25. So, I think that's 1985. But, I don't know. There were a few 86s, weren't there? Yeah, there wasn't just one, there's a few of them, so, I don't know. And they're HP part numbers, so they're probably still original. Anyway, so we've got the uh, LCR meter up there now. So now we can see that. Interesting, you've got one cap here which is different to the rest. It's a Sprog. Still got an HP part number on it though. I think. Looks like it. It's got the same part numbers. 86, 84. This has got 986 on his capacitors. 17th week, 86. So it's probably a 1986 unit. Those caps here, 8617 on as well. 17th week, 86. So 
it's probably not an 86 unit signs are pointing towards that it's interesting this cap's different that's weird anyway let's check see if they're dead or not they should be yeah nothing nothing there nothing I'll be very surprised if any power on these caps they're all fine they're all dead which means I can test them I need to go back to my test tube because it'll be easier what I do like about this CCR motor is that the even when you're in remote mode you can still control it from the front panel Whereas on the Sigler multimeter, you can't, once you're in remote mode, you can't control the front panel. You actually do it from the computer. Which I find a little bit irritating, but um, I suppose you just get used to it really, don't you? Alright, test check. These are three terminal caps. I checked this across two terminals. Let's check across these ones as well. Nothing. I hate three terminal caps, I don't really don't like them. Yeah, fine. So, I'm pretty sure the two terminals, you can kind of see the track there. So, the two terminals look like they're joined together. And you've got the other one there. So let's measure across here. I should record video for this, shouldn't I? So let's have a close look at this board, and I've had a look around the. the these all seem to be dated 1986, so that seems to be the year of this particular unit. It appears to be 1986. Even though serial number says 85. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Now I've checked the caps to make sure there's no charge on the caps, they seem to be fine. And you can see here from the traces, these are three terminal capacitors. I don't like three terminal caps. I don't like three or four terminal caps, I prefer two terminals. Don't like multiple caps. Uh, multiple terminal caps, don't like them. I just find them awkward. To deal with anyway so it looks like they are just paralleled up here and here as well they look paralleled up there as it is so I think they all appear to be paralleled up in those two terminals so I'm only going to measure across those two anyway so it's effectively like a two terminal cap anyway so let's get these tested so I've got my LCI meter here running and we shall see if I can get across these terminals I can I'll have to tell you what they are. It's 466 microfarad, 0 0.01 dissipation. Being in circuit means you probably will get the difference values in you as well, but it does affect them. That's 456.01 dissipation. 476.01 dissipation. 466.02 dissipation. The next one over here. 921 interesting that's a big difference 0 0.02 zero two. Nine twenty-one point zero two. 921 0 2 in parallel that could be 466.02 and 413.03 so this one here looks different as these two here so these three appear different Let's have a look. So that's a 440 microfarad. All 440s. So this one's measuring low. Was it? No. These two here measuring high. But it looks like they might be in parallel. And this one's measuring low. So what did I see those with? Nine something, didn't I? 922 so that's about 460 so yeah okay so those are in parallel but that one there is measuring slightly low let's measure it again so 
the 415, 413, it's like 10% out, getting towards 10% out. So it's also about 8% or something. Might be alright. It's also dated 1984. The yellow ones are dated 1986. So it's a different batch. That's from an older batch. So that's probably why that one's different. It may be nothing. Let me just do the same check with ESR. And see if it's the arthritis or anything. It probably won't. Probably won't show anything really different. 0 0.06. 0 0.06 0 0.06 0 0.08 now I'm slightly higher 0.11 so that one is definitely worse than the rest um, these two ones are in parallel when I hear so let's just do this one 0.08 yeah, so that older one, the one that's two years older, does appear to be worse. There's a 0 0.03 because they're basically half, okay. Um, I'm suspicious about this one slightly. Just slightly. Um, so 440 microfarad, 50 volt. Civil or something. Got 470. Four seventy one hundred volt. It's a bit smaller. Michael Fish. <laughs> oh, yes, Michael Fish. Yes, yeah, remember that Michael Fish and that storm. Um, I was actually in the UK when that storm hit, and it caused a lot of devastation to the place that I was at. Um, it had a lot of damage as a result of that storm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's only slightly off. What I'm making, what's making me suspicious, all right, is that it's different to the others by a significant amount. If you look at the percentage of difference between the ESRs, it's a lot different. It's fifty percent different. All right, so think of it that way. Um, if you, if that cap was by itself on a ball with nothing else around it, I'd look at it and go, it's fine. But the capacitance is a little bit low, you know, and the fact that the cap's a bit low means. It could just be badly made. It might just be that's not a good batch. Um, let me just check this one I've just pulled out for comparison. So this is an Ichicon 100 volt, and we get 390 microfarad ESR 0.1. So this has actually got higher ESR, um, but this hasn't been powered up for a while, so it probably needs to be. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? The healing effect that they get on them. I can't think of the word now. Christmas year, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's say 391. It's actually reading worse than the one that's in it at the moment. Dissipation 0 0.029. 0 0.029. Yeah, I think I might just leave it alone. It's probably fine. That's what I'm probably just being fussy. Just something to bear in mind is that that cap is different. So I might just put a little 
question mark on the top of it just to say hey it's different all right i'll leave it alone because i mean it's not that bad um there's some dials on here we should check those make sure they look all right i mean i actually want to find something wrong with the power supply <laughs> otherwise it is a real issue Reform, that's the word, that's right. Well done, both of you. Yes, um, right, diode mode. Let's check diodes on this board to make sure they're okay. But I mean, I'm actually quite disappointed, I haven't found anything really that bad. That's fine. It's fine, it's charging capacitors up. Actually, I should be recording this. So I was checking diodes, I've already started, and then I'll remember I should be recording this video. So I'm just checking the diodes on here, and they're so far so good. It's normally get a bit of a conduction and a beep when you first start, when you've got capacitors around them. As long as it drops off and it stops, and you can see the capacitor charging, then it's nothing wrong with it. Let's flip it around the other way. Just check the other way. 0.7. Again, because of capacitor charging, that 0.7. Point 0.7. 0.7. 0.7. Or 0.75, but you know, close enough. 0.7. 0.7 all the dials look fine so this capacitor here looked very slightly lower than the rest that's an older cap these are all dated 1996 this one's dated 1984 is it an issue yeah probably not i'm not really too worried so it's still kind of okay it's not really like it's way out and obviously bad it's just different so i'm just going to leave that on the line in a way that's a bit disappointing it means i now have to consider what else could be going on now down on this board down this hedge behind these regulators is a whole bunch of diodes so i need to measure all those i think i can measure most of them from the top yeah i can measure all from this side there's a little bit of dust around here so i might just get that bit of a brush off and i'll come back and then we'll start measuring those make sure the diodes are okay I do, marginally better. All right. So before we put that ball back in again, I'm going to measure those. And I might change the camera to show the meter for the recording. So I can either show it on probing, or I might use a handheld meter for this, maybe, oh, I don't know, I, just, I don't want, uh, should I use a handheld, so I'm getting shot better, I've got a lot of testing to do in there, yeah I do use a handheld. So I can show more also. Let's 
considering the recorded video, not just what you guys are doing. I can't do both at once, actually. The problem with having my meters up on the shelf up here is that, you know, when I'm trying to do this sort of thing, you can't, I can't have it in shot. You know, it would be perfect to get that meter and put it right here. You know, you can see the meter at the same time, but that means disconnecting the networks and having all this other stuff messing around with it's like, uh, too hard. Too hard basket. Multiple cameras would solve it though, wouldn't it? Hmm. Anyway. So I've got this meter out so I can show you a bit more easily while I'm doing recorded video. So let's just start probing around and we'll see what we can find. So we've got a dial right there. This is going to be a little bit awkward to get into. It's looking fine. I'm not going to get to this end like this. It looks fine. That appears fine. Fine. This one's backwards. That's fine. 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 It's fine. That's right. That's right. That's right. Point. Let's do it around the other way and check them again. I'll come back, but it looked like they're all basically looking okay. There's no shorts at least. Not so far. Got the other ones to check yet. Fine. Maybe I will record. Actually, I think I will record this one. The meter makes a nice satisfying beep sound. It's a bit quicker. This one's around the other way, so it should do nothing. Ish, maybe? No, point three. That wasn't what I was expecting. Are they back to back? Might be. We're good. This one here I need to get to actually. Right, check these ones. Oh, that's interesting. Other way. Hmm. That's interesting. Check this one. That's fine. Because of capacitance and stuff around them and anything else around, they could be getting some other readings, but that's not short and they're different each way, so they're probably alright. This one is interesting. That is CR200. What is CR200?
Um, right, manual. Oh, dear, hiccups. <laughs> Let me find the right thing. I don't know what board that is. Oh, main board, not yeah. No. Um. I'll find a circuit diagram for that board. Alright, so it starts off with a layout, I think. It's layout and description. Okay, board layout, description. Or layout, circuit diagram and description in that order. Right. I'll show you in a second once I actually get the board I want. Fortunately, there's several pages here. Doesn't help that the Q services inserted their own pages in between to advertise their business, which I can't understand because they, they're the ones that sold the board. Well, sold the um, manuals. Right, come on. See you somewhere. Having a dodgy uh, reading on that diode is interesting. I need to find out what it is and what circuitry is around it. Once I find it, which should be very soon, I'm running out of pages. Top here. Go my program and try and zoom in. So that's the main board. This CR two hundred just over here. There's there's these other caps and stuff around and big transformer. Small caps on this board here as well and a few bits stuffed under here. So there's, a, there's also some caps under there too. So I'm going to have to do some more probing around on this main board. But as the display's working, it's probably fine because this is all display stuff. So display driver circuitry and smoothing rubbish like that. So I think that's probably mostly all right, but it could be other stuff, I don't know. So CR200. Where is the circuit diagram? Oh, where is it? Oh, where's the circuit diagram for that? Maybe it's within another circuit diagram because it's got these blocks here. Maybe it's before it. Here we go. Yeah. It's before it. That's the description part. Is this it? No. Where is the circuit diagram for the motherboard? Oh, it's on here. There we go. It's down here. Okay. CR201. Right, 
500. Interesting, it's got that layout there. That's the A90, it's like it wraps around the SA90. Weird setup for the bloody diagrams. Okay, well. Um, that's a bit odd. I don't know. I'm not sure I've got the right diagram. Page 216, you reckon? Or is that a physical page or the actual page in the manual? Um, sometimes it's not the same. 1243 now. Okay, 216, so have a look at there. Good call. Right, nice one. <laughs> this is why I have you guys around. It saves me hours. <laughs> I just wish these scans are better. I do have the physical manual here, but I want to share with you what I'm doing, so if I need to, I can go to the physical manual. That's much bigger. Two two o four. So a hundred is that big one. Must be over this section somewhere. Hmm. Oh, I missed it. See our two o five up there. Two o one, two o three. Come on, I'm close. <laughs> I mean, the dotted line should indicate this ball edge, so I shouldn't have to go past the dotted line. Got CR3, CR1, I'm not looking for those. I've probably just gone past it. That is motherboard as well. There's motherboard over here. Okay. Maybe we'll look over here. Must be here somewhere. There we go, CR two hundred. Oh, Where are you going? I'm trying to zoom in a bit. Come on. Yeah. There we go. This CR two hundred. So that is clamping the five volt rail. So we've got, maybe it's purely because of loading, maybe it's because they've got stuff across the rail that's giving a false reading. Oh, it did seem like a short. Be a problem, five up rail. Don't know. Maybe I should just power it up, and measure that diode, see if we've got voltage here. If there's diode, if there's voltage on both sides, it's fine. Um, well, well, voltage across it, I should say. 
then there's nothing wrong. But if there is a short, they won't show up anything. I think that's the. Uh, I think that's what I need to do: is measure across that diode. I could lift one side, yes, but I could just measure it as well by powering it up, um, and just see if I measure voltage across it, if it's clamped or not, or if it's you know still working. You got this resistor here as well. We've got a Datum resistor R two hundred. Um, maybe I should measure that because if, if that has shorted out, that could have blown R two hundred. So I should probably check that and make sure it looks like it's okay. If that's not open, then it might be right. Questions: Where's R two hundred? <laughs> I don't see any resistors. It's probably down in this section behind all the bloody CRT stuff. It can't be, can it? Because it's coming from the supply. That's clamping across and trying to find a track. The track disappears. Could go anywhere. Where was that other diagram which showed the layout? Was that 247 was it? So on page 216. So is it 247, 243? Um, two fifty five. Okay. <laughs> Alright, where's R200? There's R300. Come on, where is it? It was 200, wasn't it? Not 300. I read it as 200. I don't know. I don't see RC hundred. Let's go out to our page. I'm pretty sure it's two hundred. Sure, it's two hundred.
or is it on this assembly? Power supply transform assembly, A71, is that on there? It's, like, it's a bit vague about where this dotted line is supposed to be, maybe it's supposed to go around like that. Then it doesn't come up this side, does it? I don't know, it's a bit weird, that's like... I don't know, I might not be looking at the right bloody thing. This is not a little bit. So that's those filters we're looking at, that filter board. A little bit of caps I'll show about mine, which I was a bit suspicious about. So we can ignore that board completely. Got various regulators and bridges. Just making sure there's not like two CR200s on here, one from different boards. Well, from different boards. Yeah, just. I don't know if this is a SCR document or not. I should try it. Is SCR? At least some of it is. Have a current. So that's over current sensing. The diagram is an SCR, but the text is. Uh. <laughs> Oh well. But what the text said does match current sense ISA ISB was always marked as. In case you didn't see that before. So ISA ISB. So that's obviously current sense A and current sense B, which are then does the monitoring across that. Okay. So it looks like I might need to be looking on the A71 board. Which one's that? <laughs> uh, I should mark these balls up. What's the numbering on these balls? Uh, it's got the part number there, isn't it? So that's the uh, 66571. 66571. Okay, that must be the last board I pulled out. I think it's the last board I pulled out. And it's got markings on the back of the board as well, so I was trying to see if I can actually look at it without pulling it apart again. Um, I need to clean that flux off that thing. I was going to do that. Let's pull the ball back out again anyway. Right. Change camera views. I think I might. Yep, I pulled both balls out. So where's R two hundred then? 
R201 is R300 Oh, I found it. There's not much stuff in this ball. I assume it's even on this ball. Hmm. Let's clean the slugs off. Puff gear again. Could be a bit stubborn to get off to. Been there for a while. It's not brush gone. Yes. R2, R3 R2, R3, R300 May not be on this board Got R300 here R300 on the logic board as well On the um, main board Let's just measure these I could try and read the bands, but it's just easier to measure them. It's 208. It's 330 ohms. This one looks like it's got the same banding. 330 ohms. This one is different. That's 16 ohms. R203, which is like a precision, is it? No, oh, maybe not. No, it's just 22 ohms. It is 22 ohms. So, so then I was studied resistor is. No one else found it yet. Yeah, R200 is right, but I can't find R200. <laughs> I need a coffee. Yes, I do. It's it's um text the wife and uh, see how generous she's feeling. See, I'll turn on a section W here. On a parcel by. So you think maybe I'm looking at the wrong one? That's section S. With section W. There. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, so there is two, yes. 
Good point. Well done. I wish I'd use universal numbering, like for the, for the whole instrument, so you got the unique number, not per board. Anyway, yes, that'd be the one we're looking at there then. Well done. Okay. So we have a 4.7 microfarad tantalum across that, that diode. And as these setups are basically the same, they should be, CR200 and CR202 should be basically identical because the circuitry is the same. They're both 12 volt regulators. Um, you expect to see the same thing. So. C200 could be bad or the diode itself or the regulator okay well done you pointed out the right thing I'm chasing something I shouldn't be chasing just throw the group of transistors to the right of U100 Well, I think it's this one I want actually. Anyway, I think I was looking at the wrong one. So, yes, I think that. Who said that? I've lost it now. Oh, anyway, who put it out? I can't. Who is it? Section W. Where's Section W thing? There we go, Willem. Oh, got swap. I've got swap for a Danger Mouse cup to a I fix stuff cup. Okay, so yes, this looks more like what I'm looking for here. This section W. So yes, that is the one I actually want. It's that one there. So C200 is be the first thing I'm suspicious about, and the regulator itself. So what I'd be inclined to do in this case is lift C200, remeasure CR200. If it's still shorted, lift CR200. Still shorted. Pull the regulator. Potentially, this is a CR two hundred one, but I think that tested okay, didn't it? I didn't see much wrong there. So I'm thinking CR two hundred, C two hundred, or U two hundred, or it could be something downstream from those. So it could be something they're providing power to. Christian, it doesn't work. What's wrong with it? Right. Um, so yes, well done. Well done, Willem. It saved me going down the wrong rabbit hole. So let's get this thing swapped back over. Um, I should put all those back together. So C two hundred. I think it's all this one here. I'm not sure. Can't see the marking. It's underneath the capacitor. I think that's 201. I think 200 is the one that's behind. So it was plus 12 volt VA, yeah, 12 VA. So that's the right hand regulator there, which is original, dated 1984. Okay.
what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this back together and I'll measure voltages on here because I can test this regular at the same time maybe, or oh, can I because mm. it's got that plastic sheet underneath which I've got to get around let's find out which one has capacity as a C200 I think it's the one that's behind which means it'd be a pain to get to once I put the boards back in um, which was layout 255 Yeah, it is the one behind. T200 is that one. So this one which could be gone. It's trying to do something. It's not completely dead. It's giving a self-test failure on power up. And this is basically going around checking some stuff and um, just seeing what I find. I found a couple of little issues. But this diode measured bad in both directions. So this is suspicious. Does it still measure bad now I've taken those other cards out? Because I've taken all my sort of power supply boards out, so I should probably retest it and see if it's changed. That's a no, and that is looking like a short because it's exactly the same reading in both directions. So we pull this board out and I'll put in something metal because it's got a battery on it. Um, yeah, let's stand over here. No different. So we know it's none of those cards. So is it the diode or is it the capacitor? I doubt this meter's got enough resolution to tell me. Okay, try to admit it. So let's try and see if I can get a slight difference in resistance between the two parts. See if I can see which one's got the heavier short on it. And I can't do it from here, I need to do it on the remote. Let me change to um, resistance. Is the capacitor? Yes, well, yes, exactly. It likely is the capacitor, but it could be a diode because if it's been stressed, it, they can blow and short out. So it could be the diode. Or it could be a regulator. Anyway, so we're on two wire resistance. Let's uh, do a relative measurement on this. I can't do relative measurement without going to the computer. That's inconvenient. <laughs> oh, I can't do relative nulling, yes. It's kind of no. Do it again. All right. You can actually see better on your screen than what I can see. For the resistance, you're seeing more digits. So I'm going to measure across the diode in both directions. Getting twenty nine point five nine five ish. Nine point five nine five ish. 
across the diode, both the same. Now yeah, they'll get something different across the capacitor. Come on, a bit of connection there. Two nine point six three. So it looks like the capacitor has got higher resistance than the resistor than the uh, diode. Let's recheck. Oh, it's changed. 201, 601, 603, 603, yeah. Let's recheck the capacitor again. Can I get to this end? Let's be easy that way. Basically the same. And drifting upwards. It's not really giving a conclusive reading. I feel I can't get the probe on probably. I don't know, can't tell from that. It's too unstable, which is a shame. Because um, sometimes you can do that, you can actually measure it across and see which one's got the lowest resistance, and that way you know which one it is. But in this case, I can't really tell. It's inconclusive. Just some coffee. Let's get the camera going again. So this short we've got across this diode here, I can't determine yet whether it's the diode or whether it's the capacitor which is behind it. There's a C, C200 behind that transistor there. Well, I said IC because there's a voltage regulator, it's actually an IC. Um, so it's either the diode or that capacitor or the voltage regulator itself. One of those three things is bad. Don't know which one yet. So it's going to have to be by process of elimination. So one trigger I have used in the past and sometimes does work is you can measure across the resistance of the device, measure resistance of that one, measure resistance of something else, measure resistance of the other thing, and whichever one's got the lowest resistance is obviously where the short was, because that's the hardest short. You know, you're talking milli-ohm differences. But in this case, the reading is fluctuating very slightly, it's drifting upwards, so I can't actually see consistently whether one is lower than the other, so fortunately I can't do it that way. So I'm going to have to do it by lifting a part out, retesting, and do it as a process elimination that way. Um, I don't know, it could be either of those three parts, but it could even be something those are going to, maybe another card, which I've already put back in, which has got a short, because it's 29 ohms. So 29 ohms could be a distance thing to it's going to another card somewhere. Actually, I'm inclined to lift boards out before I do that. Now I've already eliminated all the power supply boards, all have all these boards out, you can see I've got some here already, I lifted the other board out, so all this section here, this block has all been eliminated already. I'm actually tempted to lift this cover back off and pull those cards out. Tempted. I'm going to wait. I didn't see any signs of any problems in any of these boards. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, yep, 
Yeah, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull cards out because that's the least disruptive thing to start off with. So if I pull cards out and it doesn't go away, then I know I need to start lifting parts over here. It may mean more work to do, but it may mean that I can isolate a fork down to a particular card at the same time. So we'll do it that way. Still so listening in, good on you. So it could be a short on a board, right? Because what we're measuring across is the 12 up rail and ground. So it could even be a short on one of the other boards, which is dragging it down, making it seem like that regulator's got a fault. Right, so that's why I'm going to pull those other boards out and just eliminate those. It also doesn't eliminate everything. It's still got the front panel controls. It's still got the main motherboard. It could be something there. Um, but if we pull the boards and it's not any of them, at least it eliminates those as the cause, at the very least. And then we can come back and just pull parts of this section and see what's going on. Quickly check my email. Like I said, I've got that one I'm waiting for. That's all fine. Okay. Let's go back to this view. Because it, Fred, it could be the diode, it could be the capacitor, it could be the regulator. So there's three things that it could be. Um, and my mind is that it could be any one of those three things. I can't really say that it, it's more likely to be the diode or the capacitor. I mean, the, the capacitor is a tantalum capacitor, but there's no signs of damage. So I don't know. I'm thinking it could be this is a symptom, not a cause. So that's one going to pull cards. If I pull cards out and it doesn't go away then at least I can come back to this section. It's not a big deal to pull cards out. So we'll do that. I mean you could be right. It could easily be just a case of that diode being bad and, and I should have desoldered that leg and try it. That's entirely, you know, there's no reason why that technique isn't the right way to go. It quite possibly is the right way to go. Um, but I've got multiple approaches where I can use this and my gut instinct is saying pull cards. And I tend to listen to that. I could be wrong. It's entirely possible I'm completely wrong. Having inspected all the cards in, and had a look and seen there's very little work on them and nothing obvious but there was tantalums on some of these cards. So that could be a tantalum further down the stream which is what's causing the problem. All right, so that's why I'm looking here. So I've really got to do is actually just lift them all out. Just lift them out like that. I don't know if I can lift this one as well. I don't know. The connector might be in the way. We shall find out. It's when this tag breaks off, isn't it? <laughs> I think the connector's in the way. Let's push that back in again and leave that on mine. 
Okay. So that's all his balls lifted. And they may or may not be touching. Let's try and get them all up. And let's remeasure. So I've lifted these boards out, they're all sort of resting there, so hopefully they're not actually making contact, they could be, I'll try moving around though. So let's stick this across here. And we still have 29 ohms. If that ball, no difference. That ball, that one, that one, that one. No difference. So it could well be here then. But at least we know it's probably not one of these boards. Because I'd hate to repair it because it could even be that another thing another part of my process is that if this is blown it could be blown as a result of something else happening further downstream right and what could happen is I could find oh this is blown I repair it power it up and it blows again because something downstream stressing it so that's another part of the process of why I want to check the cards because you know if there's still a present a thought present on these cards which I didn't identify by pulling them out and looking at them, then it could re-break it after I fixed it. So, you know what I said about putting that uh, cover back on again, that metal cover over here, saying it's probably jinxed it. That's another reason why the ball cars back out. <laughs> Let's lift the diode first, we'll try that. The gut could be too late to break late breakfast, yes, that's right Fred. It could be right, it could be too late breakfast, which is affecting my gut instincts. Yeah, if I try and lift that other board I need to take catch off. So I've just left that one in place. And I'll probably find out I'll pull these out and it'll still be there. And it'll turn out to be that board, the one I didn't pull out. <laughs> oh, what's the betting of that? Come on. What's the chances of that being the one? It's an input board. If someone shoved so much input into it, oh, come on. I'm going to have to lift this board out now. My instinct's now saying it's this bloody board here. Let's pull this ball out. <laughs> oh dear. Damn instincts. I have to listen to him. Being lazy about stuff doesn't pay off. It really doesn't. Okay. Let's remeasure as I lift that board off the connector. Okay, it's not that one. Right, we can relax. Get <laughs> uh, to pop back in again. Okay. Right, we've eliminated all the cards. Right, we've done that much. We know it's not a card. It's causing that particular problem. Just start taking some parts out. Let's 
do the easy one first, which is the diode, obviously. I say is it's being a problem to get out. Okay. Oh, and it's broken off. Well, it's like that was the problem then. <laughs> Either I broke the diode or it was failed. So I just lifted the diode up after eliminating all the cards, so there's a problem. Lift the diode up, lifting it out, and it broke in half. Now, either that's bad luck, and I put too much stress on its stance, or it was actually blown. Let's remeasure it. And we're still getting 21 ohms. It wasn't the diode. Well, crap. That was a good minion. Not a diode. So what that diode do is it's just a suppression cap, isn't it? A uh, suppression diode, sorry, suppression cap. Um, what is it? Some kind of Zeno or something to help clamp it, or what? Let's find out what the hell it does. Um, Two one six, wasn't it? Page two one six. Doesn't show Zena, it just shows as a capacitor, as a diode. What can you call it a capacitor for? What the hell does it do? What is it? Anyone want to find out what that part number is for me? I doubt I can read it. the other side yeah. trying to the other side yeah. it's ground plane so it's a bit heavier to get it out I can't see what I'm doing. Can you? No. I was trying to try and find out what this part number is. Hmm. Trying to read the damn thing. C 
Four, three, four, four, five. <laughs> I don't know. Got no idea how that thing is. Yeah, I think it's probably just a su suppressed transients or something as a power supply is starting up, maybe, I don't know. Um, there must be a pass listing in here somewhere. Where's the pass listing? Placement parts list is section four two. It would seem. Where yeah, that is. Seven of them way past it. Mind of a manual. Oh, I am in a manual. Oh, this manual. I think. Ah, oh, dear. Where is it? T forty seven. Still way to go yet. Parts. Now we've got to try and find the right bit in here. Uh, that was A99 board, wasn't it? So A99 CR200. Is yeah, so there you go. There's the capacitor C200 capacitor 4.7 microfarad plus minus 10% 35 volt tens tantalum. So, yes, uh, CR200 is here. Diode rectifier 1N4004. Easy, it loads it in. Okay. If I can get my drawer open, it'll be easy. I think I have too many diodes in here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I think I've got four double fours. I've got four double ones, got loads of those. Pretty much the same thing anyway. There's a four double two. Not a four double two, this could take a while. Another four double two. I thought you were mixed up in here, so I have to try and find them. You know, 
And it's 4DR2 good enough. I mean, it's, I think the difference between a 4DR2 and 4DR4 4 is the voltage, isn't it? It's got a, um, a lower voltage threshold. Was it 200 volts, is it, or something like 4DR2? You found a manual was taking forever. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's something like 20 megabytes or something like that for the full thing. If I can find the right part, I'll put the right part in. Oh, I've got a 4 w 2 I put in. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got some 4 w 4s in here though. They're not exactly oncoming parts, are they? Just want to dig down, look up for some older parts, the other ones that are on top. I should have these separated out instead. Anyway, they're not. What's that one? 4 2 again. Ah, oh dear. Well, it's only a 12 volt supply, I believe. So I think I could probably get away with using 4 2 instead of 4 4 anyway. Or 4 dollar 3 it's closer. <laughs> I should get some 4 dollar 4s I should buy some, shouldn't I? I don't know why I'm bothered getting those other ones, but I, I don't think there's much difference between them apart from the voltage range. I don't even know why I'd bother with the like, other ones. I've tried comparing specs before. Actually, let's try and find them. Let's find the specs. Um, data sheets. Diodes. I do keep these things on hand. One in 4001 to 4007 PDF. Here is the data sheet for these. So I've got 4002s, which is 100 volts, 70 volts, and 400 volts for the 4004s with a reverse ultra 280. Otherwise, the specs, I think, are basically identical. The only difference is the voltage ratings, really. I mean, that's the only real difference. So you have to sort of think, well, why do you bother with these ones at all? I mean, why don't you just have these? Or 4007s, just get a bunch of them, just not worry about it ever again. I don't know, maybe something with speed. Maybe they're, maybe they're a bit faster if you've got low voltage. I don't know. Hey, Obersky. Um, Fleek 87 died. In the R5000 kit, the bucket. Oh no. That's not good. Was it because of the same problem? The same thing we're working on? Blew both up? That'd be annoying. Yeah, here we go. 4 day by 4. Anyway, one. I'm going to have to buy some more. I, I, I know I did buy a whole bunch of 4001s uh, not like long ago. I was thinking to myself, why did I get them? Because, why? I bought them because I think it was in a piece of gear and I wanted to try and keep the same devices. But it's like, well, why? I, don't know, I mean, yeah, they will be bigger. They will be different sizes, package sizes, but, you know, it's like... I don't really think the difference... Is that great? I mean, I've got a 4 double 2 right here. And here's... Is that a 4 double 2 Yes, it's 4 double 2 there. It's 4 double 4 And the package size are basically identical. So, it's like, yeah. In this case, there's no point in having a difference. But yeah, I put a whole bunch of 4 double ones I remember doing that. And I thought to myself afterwards, when I arrived, thinking, why did I get them? Because I should have just got something better than that. <laughs> and now I've got to try and get the stuff back in this drawer so I can shut it. Because I've got all these bridge rectifiers and stuff shoved in here. These. I've put a bunch of these. WO2s, are they? WO4s. 
these are the Datrons, Datron power supplies. Got other things as well, but. Made a cup of. Oh! Must have get up in the night. Right, can I get the drawer shut? <laughs> anyway, it'd be nice not to die. We brought that out. I haven't lost it now, have I? <laughs> sort of thing that happened. Let's get over here. Let's close this back off. We don't need that now. Yeah, you go back to that. Yeah, do something with it so it doesn't go to sleep. Oh, it just went to sleep. How's that for timing? I'll wait back up. Oh, that's a bit of the open floor. So that diode comes back to being a 1N4004. So, common diode, not not unusual at all. I've got a bunch of them. Well, I found one. I've got a draw of 4002s, which probably would have done a job. Um, but I had a 4004 originally, so I'm going to replace it with the same type. Okay, so um, I've got to clean these holes out so I can get it in there. So I think I'll, I'm not sure I'll get my soldering going in there. I'm not sure I'll get my desoldering on in there or not. I'm not sure. Um, I might try fl um, a bit of braid first, see if braid will do it. Do some flux and see if it will suck through the ball or not. But I might have to use my desoldering station to get that right. So we'll get on with that. Give it some more heat to help it get through the ball and my solar actually needs this needs cutting off it's awful. Did you get some more of this? I'm getting a bit low on it. I put flux on because it helps it to work. Into this one as well. Well, that looks like it's done the job actually. It's looking pretty good. Looks like they're clear. Keep it clean. I actually see a line on the ball there. I'm not sure if there's a crack or not. No, it's fine. It's just where the uh, solder mask edge is. This is like a line. It's fine. I'll pop this around. Put it in the correct way around. Hopefully. We've got this plastic shield here, which is going to be in the way, of course. Just, you know, he doesn't want to have stuff in the way. Let's try and work around it with that and take it off. Though I might have to take it off anyway, we'll see. Well, it's only four screws to get off, I'm not really too worried about it. Okay. Now I'm going to solder this through from the top. Because it will be easier and it will flow through. Camera a bit close in a second.
Right, there you go. This is the egg seal I'm doing. Until I put the solder on in place, of course. Right, get on there. And try and get that to flow. And get it to flow through, hopefully. It's looking promising. To this side, which could be harder. In a ground plane. I think it might have gone. Check your side. Yep, that looks fine. That's flow through just fine. Always hold on to these when you cut them. Probably couldn't see what I was talking about when I said that. Anyway, so I replaced that diode unnecessarily because it wasn't actually blown. But you know, it broke, so I don't know, maybe it was slightly weak or something, or who knows. But I think it's probably just me lifting the thing up as what well, broke it rather than anything else. I replaced it. Well, maybe measure it just in case something's changed, but I don't think it would have done. Still 21 ohms. So, now let's look at the capacitors around the back here. Let's lift that out, see if we can avoid snapping that one in half. <sighs> Draw that diode, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to superimpose a chat? I can, I can superimpose chat on this one. Um, hold on, let me just do this. There you go. There's a chat, but is it going to be in the way? Hey Peter's here. Hey Peter. Didn't see you pop in. Looks like CRT is 12VA. Ooh. Now the recording is not done through OBS, I don't record on OBS. I've lost recordings previously, I tried using OBS originally to do recording of video and record footage. Um, I had problems with it, actually lost footage. Um, I had one time it just didn't record anything. For some reason it just didn't work. It started recording, it said it was recording, but it didn't do it. So I don't do it through the camera there, I only do it through the, I only do it through the camera, I don't do it through OBS now. So avoids that potential problem. Alright, so next thing is to lift this capacitor. So now I lift this capacitor up which is just behind here. I can get it from the front here and leave it from the back to lift it. So let's try that attempt. Put some fresh solar on it first, give my chances and improve. Well, improve my chances, that's what I'm trying to say. 
I've got some solder from the back. Fresh solder always helps. Now if this doesn't work, we've got some other problem. Potentially. I mean, it's just measuring wrong. Is it really bad? I don't know, but it probably is. Oh, it's a capacitor lifted out. Let's remeasure. Twenty nine ohms. Not the capacitor. Try and flash your shield off and suck it from the other side. Just show some of this off. coming out. Come on. No, not coming out. That's annoying. But maybe I'm going to push it through the solder. We'll see if we can get away with that. What do you reckon? Is that going? I'm not sure. Then I'll take the shirt off. That's annoying. Oh well. You're in the dangerous territory. No shield. Touch over here. <laughs> there may or may not be something there. Oh, I'm in the middle. to push through. And you guys can't see how long I'm doing.
So it wasn't a diode, it wasn't a capacitor. That reduces our options a bit, doesn't it? That one's a push through. Come on. It's going to be a pain, isn't it? Right, this side I'm going to is. Just push it through once it's cleared. <coughs> oh, come on, reach, reach. <laughs> Got it wrapped around all sorts of stuff, so it's like limited space. Come on, it's not warmed up enough yet. Is that clear? No. Solder, it's not working. <laughs> Here we go. Now you go through. I thought this is fiddly. It'd be awkward to get into this bit. Right. Come on. Just trying to get the lead bin over and pop back out. Good enough. Still sticking out. So, you know it's not a diode, we know it's not a capacitor, so what is it? Is it the regular itself or is it something else? Mm. And my chase something she isn't even here, she'll just do a voltage chest, see if it works.
It was on bus A. Really? Okay, let's have a look at that. I could be chasing something which isn't there. It could just be the circuitry that supplies is different and it's causing a problem. I mean, the only way to know is really to power it up and see if there's a voltage. If the voltage is fine, then I'm worried about nothing. So, there's the neck board. Um, do you reckon it's live still? Mm, probably not. I'm probably fine. <laughs> Famous last words. All right, let's try and pop this off. Let's pop this board out. Just a couple of screws there, I'll take that out as well. Long screwdriver. Let's put that one away. Well, too, so you know, she looks at this one yet. Yeah. Rather dusty. Colour capacitors on this should be shaking, I suppose. If you've got electrolytics. Back of the board's brand new, so not been touched. Okay, well we've pulled a few things there, let's try it measuring it again. If it goes away now, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> yes, okay, good call. 592k. We're chasing sandwiches in there. Alright, let's see if we called that. So that low resistance to be measuring here, it looks like that was just a rabbit hole to go down for no apparent reason. Um, I it suggests in the chat that I pull out the CRT section because that supply apparently powers of CRT. I mean I haven't looked at that yet, but apparently got a CRT and I pulled that board out there and we're now getting well a lot more resistance. We're getting now about 480 ohms, 590 ohms. Sorry, 590. Yeah, 590k. Bloody hell. We're now getting 590 ohms there. So 0.59k. So that is um, normal. I wouldn't worry about that one. Let's go back to diode test and let's recheck that again. So we're chasing something which isn't there. That's annoying. Um, No, diode test passing through. Oh, through is 0.581, that's fine. And this way is 0 0.90. So it still looks like a short though. It's just increased. So probably circuitry is powering, which is causing the problem. So I think we can just ignore that now. Move on. That's still fun. <laughs> Okay. So if you check this board out whilst it's out, could be a problem on this board as well, you never know. It's a bit of dust on it.
Alright. So as soon as we've got this board out, we might as well give it a going over. It's supposed to make sure that all the boards are correct and well, this is the only board we haven't looked at yet. So it's got a whole bunch of electrolytics on here, so I need to check all them. We also have to make sure they're all dead first, so not end up zapping something. And also I need to clean the condenser up and stuff like did the other boards and um, we'll go through that process and see if there's anything wrong with it. Um, let's go back to voltage mode. Voltage, not current. Check the caps are all dead. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. I don't expect to be power on these caps. Not these ones, anyway. Yeah, that's all fine. Yeah, all fine. Twenty five microfarad point of dissipation. Folks, no, 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 not quite. Air kitchen, come on. 14.3 um, What have we got here? It's a 10 microfarad, so it's measuring slightly higher Can't see what that one is Only 85 degree rated caps, that's surprising Trying to put the numbers downwards. 97, 27.1, 25.1, 25.1, get on it, 25.1, all looking fine, really. 10.05 so high voltage is it? yeah 150 volt 10 is fine so there's one cap over here I wasn't sure about it seemed to be a bit different that's 25.1 that's right maybe it wasn't that one there was this one so 100 so which one I thought was weird oh. they all seem kind of right anyway so I think the caps are fine well, those ones are. There's no tantalums on it, so. Just making sure because I've missed them. No, there's no tantalums. That all looks fine. So I looked over this board, measured all the electricity caps. They all seem fine. They all seem to be what I'd expect them to be, so I don't have a problem with this board. I think this one's fine. I'm just going to clean it up. Put it back in. Dust out of this one. Using my anti-static paintbrush, of course. Just mention that anti-static paintbrush. <laughs> Needs a bit more oxidised than the other ones were. Well. 
It does seem to be more oxidised when they're close to the side of the chassis. That seems to be the common trait there. Which is, looks a bit weird because there's no vents on the side, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just my imagination. I've got some more space to see. Nothing really down there to be concerned about. Neck connection back on again. Or CRT connection back on. Right. Well, I think we're at the point we should just power back up and see what happens. And see if anything has changed. The point you've all been waiting for. Before I do that, I will put the bottom cover back on again. Let's put these power supplies back in. in this pretty sure that's not good might just bend that down a bit Bring it. Did I clean it up yet? Yeah, I've got that one now. Yes. So I shall leave the top guards off, but I will put on the bomb cover purely for safety. D 
dust it first, I think I should do. Good away. Nearly there, you better see a power up soon. I'll be surprised if anything's really changed, but you never know. They could still have that rim error. Alert, you know, whatever it is. Likely to be RAM. Screw again. Seriously? Leave the covers off and power it up. Probably won't explode after putting one of those cleaners and stuff in there. Will possibly go wrong. Let me check the chat for that. Alright. Thanks for chocolate. Now you're going to make me hungry with chocolate now. Turn it off now. Okay. I'm going to hide the chat to get out of the way. Let's back panel yet. I'll get to that. Where's that bloody plug? It's there somewhere. Okay. You know what I should have running? Do this. Maybe to do it sometimes. I just don't like to run this all the time. I like to keep things off if I'm not using them too much. Hmm, that's not the right time. <laughs> it's been a while since I turned it on. Um, yeah, Nixie clock, which was given to me by. Peter, rather generously. Um, should have it running in the background more often. I just don't have it running all the time because I don't want to burn it out. It not last a long time. Look after things like that. I only run it when I want to. Okay, enough offering. Power's plugged in. I think we're just about ready to try turning it on. Do you reckon I should get the camera in focus? Mm -hmm. Um, I should fix this next o'clock. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to do it. So I'll plug it for a minute. 
This is going to bug me otherwise, I need to do something about this. Mode. One. Almost there. Come on, Scott. Right, we do want to increase the hour. What time is it? One something, isn't it? One. Hmm, that's a long, long way out. That's alright. <laughs> I think the uh, battery's going a bit flat, haven't Oh, the watch is completely wrong. One twenty two, is that the right time? Yeah, okay. Right. Done. Right, now we've got the right time. Oh, plug it back in. Now break the tips off the mix of jib, that wouldn't be good. Okay. That's better. Right, just power this out and see what happens for the first time since giving it a bit of a going over. Also, still got a few things I need to check. You know, the natural main motherboard down here has got a few things and the CRT stuff maybe. But we've checked all the cards and poked around a bit and did a couple of things and cleaned things up. We'll see if anything's changed. Right, so let's power on. Let's increase voltage slightly. Yeah, 230, I'll do. You ready? You gonna get smoke? It's gonna work. Any bits? I should push the button and stand back, shouldn't I? Well, that is exactly the same. Power on test reset, uh, test error. Yep, no different. And it says RAM F down the bottom here. So I think we do have a RAM problem. That's inconvenient. So, we spent all day and got nowhere. <laughs> oh dear, okay. That's right, but at least we know we went through a lot, bunch of things, and um, yeah, <laughs> this mention might fail. Indeed, I need to get one of those things, then I? I need to build one. Um, Yeah, so it's alright, at least we went through the cards, we found out what looks bad. And change all the RAM. Yeah. Um, that's gonna take a bit of research. I need to look into that. And see what's going on there. I mean if I can get RAM for it, then yeah, definitely. But replacing all of it is probably be an idea. So I need to look into that and find out what the actual story is there. Um let me pull up this now. Which card's got the RAM on it? Do we know? I'm just looking through the component listing now. Just going backwards through it all to see if I'm stumbled across something that says RAM. Maybe that'll tell you which card it is and what have you.
So let's say ramp F. But that's some of the, one of the things we did look at at the very beginning, wasn't it? Wasn't that section 655 or something like that? Did mention that and what we're looking at there? Um, I'll start the manual here open. Let's have a look. Hey GB, how's it going? You're sending us a RAM issues. Yeah, well, it looks like that's probably what it is. Um, So, class 7 is RAM data error, is what it mentions in the manual here, which is on 6.55. And I thought it said... So, 0 0.26 and it says... Um, yes, on 6.59, which I don't know what page that actually is. Um, so what was that? It's about um, two fifty-five or anyway, is it? Come past it. Be close. Yeah, so it's 655 here, so 69. Let's go top screen because you can't see what I'm talking about. Uh, there. I think they've already worked around, yeah, quite possibly. That could well be it. I, I need to verify though. I'm not going to assume. So, one thing I actually looked at is the front panel assembly. I wonder if there's anything on there which could potentially be a problem too. Don't know, but it's giving our mirrors, so I'll, we'll go to that next. I mean, we've done power supply stuff, but we obviously have measured voltages. We could still have a dead regulator. Um, it's possible. Um, but it is saying an error for the RAM. So, but I want to avoid all the other stuff first in case there was something else going on. So, that's U309. So, was it U704? We looked at before, was it? I don't know which one it is. Or is it this one here? There's a second chip up, wasn't it, on that board? Oh, it's horizontal though, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so it looks like. So, 726. And the chip code is displayed at the bottom of the CRT screen. We're seeing RAM F showing up at the bottom of the screen, right? So it thinks that chip F is bad. So that is U309. Is that that one there? Yeah, U309. So we should have a close look at that in case there's any physical issues there. Uh, no sockets are so I think it looks like it's directly soldered in. So, U309 looks like it's bad. Um, if it's soccer, you can just take them out and swap them over and then see if it moves, you know? <laughs> That's always a good time for interesting things. It's also a risky way of testing things because if that chip is short, it can end up blowing something else. Um, anyway, so this board, I don't know which board that is. I guess I'll try and figure it out. Um, it's got test points on the top and there's pin headers on the side, J200 pin header. So look at that. Which one has that?
There's a couple of boards I've got these. Let me just unplug it and so I'm spinning it around. Oh, I can see what I'm doing, I think. Or is it this one here? It might be this board, hold on. I'll show you in the camera in a minute if I'm right or not. This is also a J200, it's just the right mapping. Hold on, I'm just trying to see if it looks right or not. Um, no, this isn't my board. That's very similar, it looks very similar. Layout looks very similar. It's not the right one. Let me find the right board then. I shall change cameras shortly. Let's try and find a ball. I'll come back to the to the seat. Um, is it this one? Here, look. This doesn't look the same either. It's also called J200 at the top. It's not the right one either. I think it was the first one. It looked closer. What am I missing here? Is it this one? This is also called J200. All these headers are called J200. It's hard to determine which one's which. Let's have another look. Let's try this one. Here we go. This is it. This the ball. Let's come sit down. Um, so, 309. These are HP part numbers, of course. And this is not the ball there, the replacement done. No, it's a different ball. This board looks original. Can't see any move work on it. Looks fine. So U three oh nine. The thing is, it could be not only just the chip it thinks it is, it could also be the chip it communicates to, right? So whoever it's talking with could have an issue, which would then result in um, in problems. So let's see, it's got test jumpers on here. So let's look at that in a manual, see if we can use some other processes there. But there's all HP part numbers and all brand, all original HP parts. So yeah, none of them have been replaced yet. They're all original. So you find out what the hell they are. Hey Dave, um, thanks for dropping by, Kishla. Yeah, anything on the bus could be the problem, but it's only reporting a single chip, not all chips, so it could well be one bad chip. I don't want to be putting out the logic analyzer and pin, you know, the testing every bit of data that's going into and out of the chips and make sure they're all flopping properly and flip flopping properly. I would be inclined to just get some more RAM and replace it, replace that chip. And the processor here is a 1983 date code, these are 1997 date codes. Or is it a part number? No, it's a part number. It's an 85 date code. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. So I'll find out what these parts are and try to replace them. See if we can find it. It's the first thing. So that is U three hundred nine on whatever board this is. Yeah. <laughs> um, my page is on when I was finding those things. Should have paid the pension pay number. Section four, something wasn't it? So. Right, I don't know what card it is, so I have to look for IC or U, isn't it? Use. Um, no U300s there. No U309 there. If I knew which board it was, it'd be easier. A20 U309, gate TTL, quad 2 input. I don't know, is it? We're assuming it's RAM. What's the actual point number on this thing? Um, it is. 3006. 1818 3006. Oh, is it an 88 deco? No, it's 86. Okay. Well, so what's 3006 I've got on now? God. Yeah, 2006. So it's not these parts. So it's still not the right ball. Keep going. Here we go. In Moss. Great. Sixty four K in Moss. We have no comparative numbers, so I need to do a cross reference. I've got no idea what these are. Um, let's get closer so you can see what the description is here. So this is the one that's reporting is U309. So this is ICN MOS 65536 for 64K. Dynamic RAM 200-NS. 3 hyphen S, whatever that means, I've got no idea. 2840, what's that for? What's that column referencing? Manufacturer code. That can't be right because this was the same thing for connectors. <laughs> um, is that right? That's right. Yeah, it's got the same code for connectors as well, so it can't be right. Um, so yes, one eight one eight three thousand and six. Where's my cross references? Two hundred nanosecond. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah, in this nanosecond. Um, I probably have cross references here somewhere. And I've saved cross references. Questions where I'll put them. Here we go. Um, oh, I'm just trying to find something that looks right. Here we go. Right. Is it on this list? It is on the list. 
It's on the list. Here's a list. Uh, come on, where is it? Well, it's it. Who is it? Okay, now I've lost it by zooming in. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, let's see it. It's over here. Two thousand six. There's the part number. Five quid each. Hey then. Beeping's got heart rate. No, it's not. <laughs> it's on the list at least. All right, so you want to write this down. HM. Four eight six four P. Hyphen three. I'm guessing. I wonder what three's got a significance of. Only one hit on eBay. I said they're not pulled ones. Five college. Uh, how many of them are there? <laughs> Fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen of them. Yeah, sixteen of them. Five quid each. So I would be inclined to replace them all. Let me see what I can find. Um. Okay, so um, I wonder if I could get lucky in some other way. Like it's, like I said, you know, if one's gone, it's probably an idea to replace the whole lot because RAM does wear out. Um, HM four eight six four P. That's right, isn't it? Nothing on this side. Nothing on this side. Okay. Um, oh, what's the other one called? I'm trying to remember what the site's called. Which does a lot of hard to find stuff. Um, why has it gone out of my head? I'm going to look some bookmarks. I can't find it. I can't think of what it is. Um, I will have it bookmarked. Okay. Found it.
You see, this side has them. They do. Hyphen three. Uh, One dollar each. Minimum order of two. They say new. Mm. <laughs> um, this is some third party company. I don't, I don't want third party companies. Yeah, so this site has them from various suppliers with the same hyphen three part number. It has used ones listed as well. So I get used ones for a dollar each, dollar something each. We've got some new ones from some other place. I need to find out what the hyphen two, hyphen three means because there's a hyphen two ones here as well. I need to find out what that means. Let's go find the data sheet. I'll ch chat again in a second. Hitachi, made by Hitachi. I wonder if another brand will work. I wonder if there's another model number which has a different brand. Sometimes it's a thing. Okay, here's a data sheet for them. So P denotes plastic package. Um, all right, here's data sheet. Let's save this data sheet before I forget. Then I'll come back to the chat and see what's going on there and show you this. This window we are. Well, I can't just put the window out. Data sheet, which is being glitchy, of course it is. The three is slower, so the two will do. Okay. Red will. Yeah. NT4164 might work. Well, if I can find a modern equivalent or a different brand, I mean, I don't know, maybe, but. I like to do like for like, but if I'm replacing like for like, does that mean these will fail as well? Ah, okay, you found some info there, Ableski. KM. 
So I'm guessing that's what the NTE 4164 is then. It's like the KM4, uh, 4146, is it? M3764? MB2264, yeah. Six pounds each, yeah. Hundred percent feedback on eBay. And that's for the um the HM version, is it? I'll have to look at eBay. Because I forget what I put in browser. Close that off. I broke out my window and it seemed to lost, lose the rest of them. That's weird. There we go. All right. eBay. Let's have a look. Uh. Taiwan, a Poland. I guess that's the one you're talking about. Hyphen twos. And you reckon a hyphen two is faster? Um. Oh yeah, yeah, 150 nanoseconds. So being faster should be safe then, shouldn't it? This means it's higher spec chip. And he will ship them to me, that's great. It's shippable and it's got 41 available. Uh, 41 lots with 8 pieces per lot. Removed, uh, used parts removed from sockets and refurbished. Not tested. So, may or may not work, but original. That's the risk, isn't it? But for that price, it's worth the risk, to be honest. Um, there's a guy here doing nine pieces from the US. So they're available, I can get them. But I'm always a bit sceptical. There's a PC extender card, extended RAM card with those chips on it. Oh, I wonder. I wonder. I used to have something. I did have some stuff. Bear with me. Would it be funny if I've got an old RAM card laying around which has got the right RAM on it?
the same to the footprint. Uh, that's a shame. Not this time. Pretty sure anyway. So I keep stuff like this, never quite know what you're going to need. But no, not this time. Maybe I'll try and get my drawer shut again. Anyone need a, uh, a G3 card for the old MacBook? Old uh, Mac computer? Sonic Crescendo, 400 megahertz. Might come in handy one day. Right, so, no, I did used to have some RAM. I know I did have some, but I think it's gone. I thought I had one of those drawers up there, but I must have chucked it out. I think I'm never going to use that. So, okay. I have to buy some RAM. Chat chat again. Um, phone is my RAM knife. That's the point. No, that's nice. It's the, that's the old MacBook RAM. It's not the right one. Do I have a RAM tester? No, I don't. How much for a G4, G4 card? I don't know. Um, I've got a few cards laying around actually. Old Mac ones. And we've got some old Mac computer still. We've got the old G4 tower case around. Which have been upgraded. Um, Hitachi ones. Just go down that page and see the um, the equivalents. Let's make the window smaller so I can try and see more than one thing at once. Right. Because we got this RAM card with 18 chips on it for 135 dollars. I need those chips. <laughs> um, there's no one there, 141, it's too expensive. 500, no. Um, four pieces. Of 4164 brand new from Germany. Is that one you're meaning? It's only got two available, which means it's only have to do eight. These are identical parts. May not ship to New Zealand. Uh, can't get them anyway. Alright, so I might just have to take, my, take a chance on some new stuff and um, and go from there, I think. I don't have any RAM testers. How am I going to get a RAM? I don't know. Do I have anything to test RAM? I don't know. Um... Yeah, okay, so that's. Here's got loads of used ones. Alright, so. Eight items per lot, I need 16. So, isn't it sensible then to get 24? I hope they're not fake. Because if I get 24, at least I've got a chance then of having a few bad ones. You know, I could have eight bad ones and still be okay. If I only need to replace one, but if I'm inclined to just have a stock of them. I mean, is, it, is having mismatched speeds going to be a problem or should I do the whole lot? 
But if I need to replace one, do I just get one lot and... Well, it's $6.75 a lot. So it's less than a dollar each. Yeah, anyone want to point me towards a round tester? I don't think I've got one. So in total it cost me thirty dollars US to get these get twenty four of these chips. Get the lot. Well, I'm going to get 24 of those. I've got my cart. So let's get some of the threes as well. This guy's got another guy from Poland has got the hyphen three, and his hyphen three new old stock also from Poland two of them individual doesn't say how many you can get this got individual no price to shipping no price for shipping so I'll get some hyphen threes as well. What I'm inclined to do is get hyphen three, replace just the one RAM, and have a set of hyphen twos. And then if I have more problems, replace the whole damn lot. In case a hyphen two can't really be dropped in there. What I'll do is I'll put a socket in. When I, when I place the chip, I put a socket in, and then I can replace it much more easily. Um, scrolling back up now, because I've gone past a whole bunch of stuff because I was just scanning through it. There's also one listed here, is CM8164. So I imagine there's probably different brands which you can use, you can change the prefixes with in order to get the device you want. Hyphen twos, hyphen twos, hyphen twos. There's not many hyphen threes, but what they are are expensive when it's a hyphen three. It's, I guess they're rare, are they? You're socketing it differently. I don't know what the um I don't know what the compatibility is. I'll have to research more and actually compare data sheets, stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely need a RAM tester. I'm going to get a RAM tester. Yeah, I think it's probably just different grades. I mean, is it like the minimum speed it can do? Or rather, the maximum speed it can do? Well, I don't know what it'd be. So, minimum recommended speed. Minimum guaranteed speed, is it? Um, so, a hyphen 2 would probably be okay. I think it's probably just a higher grade chip when I do the sorting, I'll probably make the RAM chips and sort them 
into grades and the hyphen 2 is probably just a higher grade of the same chip where it just has a better speed just got lucky with that one I don't know um, I'm going to grab a bunch of 2's I'm going to buy those now they've been them, yeah exactly that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to convey so they made them out of one batch, it's one die it's the whole lot and I just specify them based on how good they are so somehow I went from having three sets chosen to only having one set chosen no, I want three back to that, okay, check out I'm buying 24 Yeah, that's right. So 200 nanoseconds. Well, this is 150 nanoseconds. So the the twos might be fine in a three situation, but not necessarily all around. So yes, I'm buying them. So even if I go through a whole lot and find only one good one, it'll work. I hope. Uh, anyway, it's buying it now. Okay, paid for, done, ordered. Hi, hey, Ian. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sleep in. It must be like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So yes, I do want a RAM tester. So you reckon it's RAM testers on eBay? Okay, 4164 RAM tester thing off eBay. Does it have to be a 4164? Um, RAM tester. Those are not the types I want. I might have to put your term in there in order to find one I want. I suppose there's lots of the plug-in type card type RAM testers. Okay. 4164. There's a thing on PC Wave projects. Is that for a RAM tester? Is it? So there's one here from the UK. ZX Spectrum C64 Retro Commander <laughs> Arcade, etc. Um, 4027, 4096, 4108, 4116, 4516, 4164. So what's the twin A? Is a 4464 version here. So what's the difference between 4164 and a 4464? Because I want a 4864, don't I? Yeah. Confuse myself there. Um. I mean, does a 4164 work on a 4864? Because I need to make sure if I'm testing, I need to not be damaging in the process by using the wrong kind of tester. Um, I've got no experience with RAM, so I, this is a new area for me to try and learn a bit more about. I see 4164 is, there's a lot of them on there, like the actual chips, anyway. You second digit, you think, is a type. Okay, you reckon so, it will work.
Well, you got the URL there, so look then. I don't want to make one though. This is easy. Might be quicker than buying one. Do your own chest shield for Arduino Uno and Nano. Okay. So. Is that just going through its addresses and checking the addresses work? Is that what it's doing? So that's 4864 tester on GitHub, yeah? Because the one on PCYs just says DRAM tester. Yeah, so what I was kind of thinking here is that this, it doesn't matter as long as the slowest is not slower than original. You can go faster and not slower. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this project on PCWay, which looks like why well, has got analog inputs on there? Is that just broken out? Don't know. I don't know what the actual test is doing because if it is just purely just cycling through the bits on the RAM, I could make one. If I know the configuration of the chips and stuff. Let me just um, look at this. I don't know much about RAM though, it's the only problem. So, you know, it's it may be I get data stored and retrieved from RAM, but. Um, still be faulty or something it could be weak or something I don't know but I know little about it um. It looks like yeah, there's a f the faster one is just more responsive. It just it's just faster. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Paul Lowe join CAS on. All right, I don't really want to be able to test that. I, I, I'd rather buy one. If I can get one which I know is definitely going to work, then I'll, I'll just buy it. It's fine. I've got the money to buy a tester. Um, second digit would be CMOS, NEMOS, etc. So this is NEMOS. So I'm guessing that 8 means NEMOS then. Or NMOS, we would call it. Um, so what's the difference between NMOS and CMOS? 
I don't know. There's obviously a voltage difference. What does MOS use? I'm not familiar with it. Um, it's probably in the specs, isn't it? It probably say what the maximum voltages are. Supply rail, 5 volt. A high input, 2.4 to 6.5. Low, minus 1 to 0.8. Okay. Don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, should I buy a couple of testers? I mean, this one, there's a tester here which does say 4816. Well, see, it's not enough. This is 4164. Maybe let's just shorten it down. Let me see if it expands on it more in the actual listing. Um, supports one bit DRAM devices, 4K to 56K. Go examples. So it does actually give me a confirmation it's going to work with that part. HM4816. HM4864 actually specifies it. Okay, this tester will work with this device. It's listed as the as a part which is false. So yes. Okay, I'm buying this one. Buy. Because I need to be sure, you know, I need to be sure it's going to work. So, it's going to cost me a bit of money, but hey, I may use it for other things too. Right, purchased a tester as well, and this is coming from somewhere UK. Um, yeah, hopefully it's the right one. <laughs> think I'm good then so I've ordered RAM, I've ordered the tester. This have I got the right one in case I'm talking about something else. I don't need to double check now. I'm paranoid. Because I didn't read it properly. So it does minus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, and minus 5 volts on one socket, and 5 volts only on the other socket. And this is a rated as being a 5 volt only device in their list, anyway. So, and it mentions, yeah, okay, I need to save this page, so I've got a reference for it, and this has got a manual. Yeah, so looking good. I think it's um. So I'm going to, have to put this to one side, and come back to it later on once I've got the RAM, and the tester. Because I, what I'll do is I'll get the tester, test the RAM, pull the chip out, test it, see what it thinks. Then I can test the new RAM before I put it in in case it's blown or something, and causes more damage. So that's the way to go, I think. Pretty good. Right, so I'm going to have to come back to this once I've got these things that have arrived.
I'm just going to put it back together. <laughs> At least I know which card it is now. You think the TO 866 can test it? I've got one up there. Yeah, I'd rather get something which is designed for it though. You know, I don't know about that. I mean, that also uses um, my TO 866 PC software to run it. And I have to use the laptop and stuff like that for it. Yes, I'm still streaming, although not for much longer than I think. I'm getting hungry and really thirsty. So, yes. Got progress, so... Order RAM, order tester. And I have to, have to wait for those to turn up and hope they do actually arrive. Um, and then... Replace some RAM. And then once we've done that, we'll see if there's anything else that's wrong with it. Should we test power supplies for pack it up? I think it'd be a smart thing to do, wouldn't it? Let's test some power supplies. And I closed this off, so I need to link it again. Hey, battery goes again. Do one last thing before we close off, in case there's something I'm missing and we need to do more work on it yet. Booting up these tester stuff. These tester. Test controller software stuff. So back on DC voltage. Yep, that's all fine. So it's spin us around, do some voltage chests. This will be when I actually touch something and short something out and make a big cloud of smoke and blow something up, will not it? <laughs> this will be when it goes horribly wrong. Just one last thing, it's when you push it, it's when things go wrong. Okay. Um, ground points, I guess I'll have to figure that out. There's a ground point right there. I might just clip onto that actually. Of course, we might have floating circuits too, that might be a problem, but we'll see. Ground, right there. Right, turns back on. So, I'm guessing I should better measure at the end of each of these capacitors to measure the voltages. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Six capacitors, maybe not. Got that capacitor there, which I've measured there. So that's that voltage. I might have to maybe probe directly down here. Let's get a different probe. Fine tip. Just like to short something out. Okay. Let's record once we get this set up. Let's go to that view. probably been away anyway. So I'm gonna test voltages on this thing just for the sake of completeness. It does look like it's got a RAM problem but let's test voltages before we go away. And see what we get. I'll tell you what they are um, as I'm probing. So probe there. That is doing 11.8 volts. Slightly low.
So seven point eight volts. P minus twelve, it is. This should be plus eight. It's seven point nine six, that's fine. We've got here plus five. Plus five. Maybe that's a separate rail. I'm not getting anything there. If I measure the centre pin, nothing there. So it might be a floating rail, it might be different to this one. Yeah, I'm getting nothing on there either. Minus five, no, minus 15, nothing that one. This might be separate rails, might be floating. And plus 24, get nothing in that one either. So I think these rails are on a separate rail, um, like the floating isolated from this one. I think this is all VI. And these are separate. So I think these ones are readable because they're in the shared ground. And these ones are not shared. That's why I can't read them. So let's probe onto there and do it again. Not getting anything there. Let's probe to that point there. Try here. Getting 24 volts there. That's right. Well, it's 23 point something. What was it? 23 point. Come on, keep a connection. 23.7, pretty much. Next one. 15.13, that's fine. Minus 15 here. Minus 15.1, that's fine. Plus 5 here. Yeah, 4.96. And plus 5 here again. Plus 4.93. So, yeah, the rails are looking okay. That plus 24 is slightly down, wasn't it? It wasn't much, though. It's 0.3 volts. It's down a little bit. Probably doesn't matter though. So, rails look basically okay there. NTK really these, thank you. Yes, I've forgotten about those. Yeah, Tesla's right to all the addresses and read it back to make sure that they're, they're storing correctly. That's right, yes. Okay, retro computer guys between 4164 and 4864. Okay. Maybe it's the voltage thresholds are slightly different on the uh, NMOS version. Maybe it's, they can switch slightly faster because they're got a lower voltage threshold or something. So okay, indicator of these is a good point. If I don't knock the camera, it'd be great. So indicator of these down here. There's some there. I think there's some other ones as well around the place. I think there was something else somewhere. I'm gonna take this off. Pad up that on. So LEDs, none of those LEDs are on. So I think that's a good sign because those are supposed to light. I think those are for overloads. So those are looking fine. Assuming the LEDs aren't blown, of course. And is there anything else? Don't see any other indicators anywhere. There's some LEDs on these balls, they're not lit up. 
Well, they're very dim, actually. They are lit up, but they're very dim. Let's roll this over. I'll change my layout a little bit. You can see them. So there's an the LED here, and there's a couple there as well. And I think that might be it. Not see any more, so okay. Let's just have a look at those. Let's turn this lighting off so you can see better. Ticket. Okay. So the other thing we look at as well is indicator LEDs. So I've already checked the ones on the power supply for overload over here. Those weren't lighting up, so those look good. There's some other LEDs over here. Let's turn it on. Check those ones out. So we've got a green LED here. That's on. That one's not on. No, the signal thing is that is. Okay, that one's now gone off. Now it's back on again. So I don't know what these LEDs are supposed to be doing. That one's not coming on at all, but that one's coming on off a couple of times. There you go, red one come on. So maybe that's like a boot up thing. I did read something about this on the EV Block forum. So they're doing something. Are they right? I don't know, I'm gonna have to read into that. Yeah, it's obviously doing something. As it's doing its testing, obviously, it's probably tying up to that. Right. We synchronize that LED with a screen. So this is what really did. So this is what really does in conjunction with the screen. See, as the screen was refreshing, that really LED flashed on. Now it's doing the self-testing, testing the screen, it's doing the button test. Now it stopped. Maybe it's like a wait state or something. But that's so that's why the idea hasn't come on at all, but I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because it's not got the yet. Yeah, so that red one's coming on when it's doing a reset. I don't know, I have to find out what those do. And just over here are the red LEDs for overload. None of those have lit up at all, so they're looking fine. Doesn't seem to be flickering on anything like it's doing anything else. So it looks like there's no power supply overloads at least.
We're back. Okay. You only find out what those LEDs are supposed to be doing. Um. Okay, I need to think what I'm doing next. Okay. DRAM. Okay. Yeah, I've got no real knowledge of how RAM works. I know a little bit, not much. I say stuff to it and read it back out again. That's about it. Um. Okay. So I need to read up about those LEDs, find out what LEDs are supposed to be saying, whether that other green LED is supposed to be on or not. There may be other faults that are present. Don't know. Um, but yeah, it's something. You know I mean, we've confirmed that the original suspicion that the RAM could be bad is quite likely. Hey, Retro Snake, how's it going? And you missed most of the stream. Been going for hours. <laughs> Don't forget to click like and subscribe. How's that? Everyone click like. Do that now before we forget. So the um So RAM is ordered, RAM tester is ordered. I have to wait for those to arrive, then we can look at carrying on with it and seeing what else we can find. I think once we get past that RAM failure, well likely RAM failure, we haven't confirmed it as RAM yet, um, then you know. We can see if there's anything else wrong. There could be other things. Don't know. But I was supposed to be a multi-part video, and map footage I've recorded means it's going to be multi-part, or at least heavily edited. So, all right. Thanks everyone for dropping by, and um, I'll catch you all next time. We've out of this. I don't know when that will be. It might be a couple of weeks' time. Might be a few weeks. I probably won't stream again until I've got something to do a stream about. Maybe once those parts turn up. Who knows how long it'll take. So, thanks everyone for dropping by. And I'll catch you all next time. And have a good rest of the weekend, wherever it may be. And um, yeah, see you later.